Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cozy Bear's Cooking, the most audacious cooking show on these here internets. My name is Alexander Kazina, and I am so happy to introduce you to episode four of season three of Cozy Bear's Cooking. Uh, Cozy Bear's Cooking season three is a limited time series. For 12 weeks, I'm making all manner of international and unusual dishes for your eyeballs and ear holes to enjoy and my lips to savor. Uh, if you're not currently doing so already, you can catch the show live every Sunday, like today, at 4 p.m. EST. Uh, and you can, of course, also subscribe and follow the show. Uh, doing so will turn you uh, my eternal gratitude uh, and, of course, a few wheel spins from the prize wheel of causality. I think I messed up a part in there. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep this show trucking because today uh, we have quite the episode. Uh, as you probably ascertained uh, from the title of this stream, uh, we are gonna be making Mario's face out of quiches. Now, of course, not just any Mario's face. Uh, for the process of making this easier, we're gonna be using Mario's 8-bit face over here. So if you focus on just Mario's 8-bit face, uh, you'll notice that there are a grand total of 60 individual squares that make it up. Uh, a portion of those squares are red, a portion of those squares are like a brownish color, uh, and a large portion for Mario's skin are of course yellow. Uh, what I decided is that the yellow faces will be made out of a relatively normal quiche with pieces of turkey bacon uh, and fried onions inside of them. Uh, the red quiche, uh, or rather red part, which largely compi comprises Mario's hat, uh, will be made from a tomato-based quiche uh, which comes courtesy of the New York Times.com. Uh, and finally, the green quiche uh, or the green parts of Mario will be made from a spinach quiche. Uh, clear as mud? Well, even if it's not, uh, you'll be able to catch up more or less as we go. All right, uh, first things first. My intention is that um, every time we prepare our mini quiches that will make up Mario's face, uh, we should probably be pre baking the quiche crusts so as to make sure that the crusts don't get soggy when we're properly cooking them. Um, I have right over here a grand total uh, of 60, uh, not 60, 30 uh, individual uh, little muffin containers. Uh, together, if I do all these muffin containers twice in the oven, it will make a grand total of 60, which is what we're aiming for this evening. Um, the plan at the moment is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna preheat the oven to, I believe, 425 degrees. Uh, after the oven has been preheated to 425 degrees, we are gonna put um, a uh, smattering of quiche dough, which I prepared ahead of time with a little bit of buttermilk, uh, on each of these individual uh, muffin tins. Uh, we're gonna cook that for 15 minutes, and so they will be nicely pre-baked. While that's happening, we're gonna make uh, our quiche filling for the yellow quiches. And I probably assume we'll probably make like the, a bit of the red quiche filling at the same time. Uh, and then when we take our pre-paked uh, quiche crusts out of the oven, we'll pour the uh, yellow and red uh, fillings inside them. Uh, we'll cook them in the oven. Uh, then we will repeat the same process with the creation of our spinach quiches, uh, the rest of our red quiches, and of course the pre-baked little quiche crust that will be used to make both of them. So a lot going on, a lot to see, a lot to do, uh, a lot to cook today. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take things step by step. Uh, so I'm gonna just open up my phone real quick because this is where I keep all my recipes stored. Um, the quiche crust I'm gonna be using is actually a buttermilk crust that I previously used over Christmas break uh, when I made a couple of uh, pie crusts, uh, one of which was used for a butternut squash pie, which was actually pretty good. It wasn't featured on this channel, it was just for ourselves. Um, they recommend that we preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and of course, what we're gonna wanna do is after we put our uh, pie crust inside our little muffin tins, uh, we're going to want to uh, cover them with pieces of wax paper and put on top of those wax paper uh, some garbanzo beans or chickpeas, uh, which will be used to kind of weigh them down so that the pie crust don't rise while they're in the oven being pre-baked. Uh, so first things first, not getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and let's uh, preheat the oven to, uh, let's see, 
let's see here. Uh, convection bake, 400 and, uh, convection bake, let's do 435 degrees. There we go. And see, so we will slowly but surely wait for the oven to uh, get to the point where we need it to get to. Um, let's go ahead uh, and let's start taking things out of the fridge. Uh, of course, we're gonna need to use a lot of eggs today. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to get these eggs out of them fridge. Uh, you know, we're also gonna need to use, we're also gonna need to use uh, a fair bit of bacon. We have some turkey bacon right over here. Uh, we're gonna be cooking all that for the first round of quiches that we are going to be making. So might as well slowly begin to kind of get this on the road. Um, there is a lot to do. What I'm gonna do, start off is I'm gonna begin cooking the turkey bacon. And then once the turkey bacon has reached a certain level of cookedness, uh, I'm gonna begin working on the uh, individual pie crusts for the first round of mini quiches, putting those inside the muffin tins so we can get those ready to be put in the oven. Uh, let's bring our stove view in. Okay. Uh, you normally don't really need to use all that much um, oil in this particular case because, you know, the bacon will secrete a lot of oil themselves. I'm just gonna add a little, like, just itty bitty dab, just like that, just to kind of help them along the way. Give them a little bit of a, how do you say? Pick me up. I'm not gonna lie, the music is, even with the volume on my computer turned down a little bit, it feels like it's a little bit on the loud side, so I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit on my end. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn the temperature up on the uh, stove to medium. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna cook up all of the turkey bacon that we have at the moment, so we don't have to deal with any leftovers on a future date. Uh, oh, whoopsies. Hold on a second, I was trying to use my foot pedal to move something out of the way, but it was not working. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and let's just give our hands a quick little wash. I made sure to wash my hands quite well uh, before the stream. I actually took a shower just before the stream, but it's always good to give your hands another wash. Make sure they're uh, nice and ready for whatever it is that you are about to embark on doing. The oven is currently at 112 degrees uh, per the convection bake, so it's gonna be a little while since uh, until they reach the temperature we need it to get to. Uh, let's see. Frying pan is still taking its time. While that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a little bit of space on the counter. We don't need the cutting board there at the moment. Uh, one thing that we do need, however, is a little bit of flour because we wanna make sure that the uh, pie pastries uh, don't stick to it. Uh, so let me just grab a little bit. Uh, this right here is specifically cake flour, which is what we made part of the pie crusts with. I'm a little bit burpy because I had some uh, garlic potatoes uh, and a shawarma sandwich uh, delivered courtesy of Uber Eats before this stream. Uh, thank God for food ordering apps like that on a really snowy day. It's like really, really snowy right now in Montreal and thankfully not too cold. Um, but yeah, I was not going to embark on a big walk this afternoon because I would have been out there all day coming to and from home. Okay. I think that our frying pan is about hot enough for us to begin working our bacon. Let's go ahead and let's begin to plop this stuff in.
Mm -hmm. I'm actually putting this stuff in. I'm beginning to realize that it might actually be a little bit on the difficult side to fit all of this in. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put the rest of this bacon back in the fridge for the time being. Uh, this bacon over here that is currently on the stove, I will continue to cook. And later on, if I feel like I need to add a little bit more bacon to quiche number one, I can always improvise on the fly. Not that I need to add all that much bacon to it in the first place, you know what I mean? Give me one quick second, I'm just drying my hands, and then I'm going to grab myself a pair of tongs so that I can flip those bacon -y boys over and over. The idea is that we kind of want to, we want to cook the bacon uh, before we insert it into uh, the quiche because we want to give it sufficient time to cool down. So that it's not like accidentally partially cooking the quiche when we insert it into the quiche mixture. That's the idea. That's being taken care of, so that's real nice. Uh, we could also cook up some onions right now, but you know what? I think I'm gonna largely just focus on the bacon and the pie shells for the time being. Thing about the pie shells is I wanna make sure though that um, I kind of like, once I'm ready to kind of like put this in the oven, then I take out the pie shells and I kind of flatten them out and put them in the individual muffin uh, shells, because if I kind of leave it out on the counter too long, it'll get maybe a little bit too long and it, and it will be hard to kind of work with it. Uh, hello, insert yourself. Have you watched uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Uh, your cooking reminds me of it. Uh, not sure how to take that comment. I have not watched uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, although I actually have heard good things about it. I've heard a lot of people be like, oh man, that, it's actually like a not bad reboot of that long and storied horror franchise. I don't have any intention of seeing it because I don't have any uh, connection to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise and nothing about that movie looks appealing to me personally. Um, but never say never. If there was some sort of circumstance where it was like, hey, do you want to watch uh, Texas, uh, the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I wouldn't shy away from it. Um, but it's not necessarily on my bucket list, if you know what I mean. Uh, thank you all the same for joining in today. Uh, insert yourself says because the killer skins off people's faces and uses it as a mask to hide his identity. I'm guessing you're referring to the turkey bacon. I mean, the turkey bacon is only gonna be a relatively small component of tonight's meal. Tonight's meal is largely just uh, quiches that I'm gonna be making into Mario's face, specifically 8-bit Mario's face. So I suppose we'll, we'll have to wait until the end of tonight's proceedings to see if indeed this does or does not resemble Leatherface. It's certainly going to be something that we're going to have to be uh, waiting for with bated breath. There's no way of knowing ahead of time whether or not it will or won't. Okay. Uh, you know what? I haven't had a drink of water. I'm just going to go ahead and grab myself some water and have that real quick. Normally I tend to have slightly more flavorful drinks on stream, but I actually just uh, brushed my heat, brushed my teeth, whoops. Uh, right before the stream started. So figured I'd have something a little bit more normal. 
Um, is there any oil in the pan? I don't see any sizzling. Uh, I did put some olive oil in the pan. Uh, not a huge amount though, because I wasn't interested in making a super big grease fest. Okay. There we go. Uh, I grease my bacon like it's deep fried. I mean, I, I get the appeal. I'm not going to chastise anyone for doing that. I definitely can imagine that that definitely gives that bacon a nice, full, greasy taste that you can't get when you only use a small amount of oil. Personally, I tend to keep things a little bit more on the light side. Um, but I'd imagine that what you're describing probably tastes pretty decent. Pretty decent. Okay. You know what, I'm gonna move a couple more things out of the way here, just to make more space for uh, when we prepare our pie crust dough for our muffin tins. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna just put one uh, muffin tin over here so that it's ready to go. Um, here we go. I was looking where the cooking spray was. We're gonna need this to help grease up the muffin tins. Now, let's see how the bacon is doing. It's definitely getting nicely cooked, but we definitely need to give it a little bit more time. Get it nice and crispy and browned. Okay, uh, just gonna give you a quick sneak peek ahead of time. Uh, this right here uh, is the dough that we're gonna be using. This is a buttermilk pie crust dough that I actually made this particular batch uh, back in December. I have two more batches in the fridge that we're gonna be using today that I made last night. Uh, I really made sure to kind of like fold this dough over itself quite a few times so that it was well conditioned. Uh, I'm expecting that this is gonna be quite a good time. Again, let me just focus on finishing up crisping the bacon first, and then we'll deal with our dough. go. <sighs> I know I already said it, but uh, thank you once again, insert yourself for tuning into today's stream. Much appreciated. Your mouth is getting watery. What is happening to you? Uh, I don't know. I suppose it is the power of bacon. Bacon, a good meat. I really do quite enjoy bacon a lot. I do think that Bacon maybe got a little bit overexposed when it came to the online internet cooking stream for a while there. I have nothing against, uh, you know, YouTube channels like Epic Mealtime. Uh, I really do like what those guys did uh, for online cooking. And those guys uh, previously, at the beginning, were based out of Montreal. So you got to respect that as a fellow Montrealer. Um, but... We definitely collectively as a society went a little bit hard on the bake for a little bit too long. Um, but I can't deny its scrumptious, crispy yumminess. That there is no denying. 
Uh, oven is currently at 350 degrees. It'll probably, because it's on convection bake, it'll probably go up to about like 410 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, hello, spiked W style. Uh, yes, indeed, it is the bacon. It does it to everyone. Uh, it's like a yawn. The bacon is contagious. I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I have quite the stream ahead of me. Let me tell you, this bacon is only the beginning of what today's proceedings will entail. We have cheese and eggs and all sorts of yummy French goodiness uh, that will be coming together to make a uh, classic Japanese Italian character, AKA Mario Mario. All right, I think that we got maybe like another minute left on the bacon and I think we'll more or less be done with this stuff. Echo, set a timer for one minute. One minute, starting now. All right, and that's that. Hope things are going well with you, Spike W style. Hope that Rick is doing well as well. Unfortunately, because it's turkey bacon that I'm cooking with and not regular bacon, it looks a little bit on the, you know, iffy side, but as far as turkey bacon looks, it's fine. It'll do to the job. It'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the turkey bacon on this plate over here. Uh, I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, on air with Jer, uh, turkey bacon trumps all. I mean, I think that turkey bacon is uh, underrated. I think that people tend to be a little bit too dismissive of it when they say, oh man, it's only pork bacon and nothing else. Uh, Echo, turn off the timer. Uh, I might be available to play Halo uh, later tonight. Um, the thing is, is that typically after my cooking streams, I tend to take a little bit of time to clean up, but usually not that much. If I finish my stream tonight on time at like seven or so, I should be able to be able to clean up just in time to do some Halo at like 10 or so. All right, uh, I'm just gonna turn on the fan here real quick. Also, I'm gonna remove this from the burner it was previously on too. Uh, the bacon, which is currently on this plate, I'm just gonna quickly kind of fold it over itself so it fits a little bit more snugly on the plate. And I'm gonna just put some aluminum foil over it real quick. Uh, and here we go. Now, again, the point is not that we keep the bacon perennially hot. We do want it to cool down a little bit so that it doesn't cook the eggs when we uh, assemble it together into our quiche. Uh, but we still, at the same time, don't want it to become super cold either. There we go. Closing the um, vent on the top of my oven can be a little bit tricky. All right. Well, with that out of the way, uh, next step for is for us to work on our dough a little bit. So real simple, uh, we're gonna unpackage this dough. Uh, we are going to roll it out fairly thin uh, and we're gonna uh, use a cup to cup a bunch of uh, individual pieces of dough, which will go uh, on this uh, muffin tin. I'm gonna have to use a sufficiently large uh, cutter to do so because we have to remember that the piece of dough needs to account for both the hole in the center and also the parts on the side. I fear that this, like something like this, for example, might be a little bit too small. Hmm. I'll we'll have to figure this out. But we can always do one with this cup anyways and see if that works. Uh, how did dough become a term for money? There's a Chinese riddle for you. I don't know. It's definitely one of the big mysteries out there. I don't know. It has to be like a 1900s term or something. I gotta make that bread. Okay, so real simple right off the bat. We're just gonna roll some extra cake flour on top of our rolling pin. Uh, and now, uh, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, roll out our pie crust dough. 
and we're gonna really try and get this thing as thin as we can possibly get it. If by the end of this evening we run out of pie crust dough, I have a bunch of um, paper muffin tins that we can use in its place. So we'll be making uh, crustless quiches, um, but I prefer personally not to use that if I have the choice. Oh, that's the oven. Uh, it just reached 410 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where we want it at. I love bread. Bread is one of the top five things in existence on this mortal coil. Life would just not be the same without bread. When people talk about like, oh man, would you take a one-way trip to go back in time? I'd be like, I, I would not be opposed to going back in time, but I'd wanna make sure that there's bread on whatever side I'm time traveling to. Okay. <sighs> this is the size of one of our little crustarinos. We're going to go ahead, we're going to apply a little bit of vegetable spray to our muffin tin over there. Now we're gonna see if this indeed is big enough. Uh, Spiked says, my husband makes fun of me for liking white bread uh, when we could get much better bread. I liked white bread. Hmm. Okay. It's looking like this crust is going to be a little bit on the small side. So if you see over here, it like barely kind of fits into just the bottom. Now, here's the thing. I don't have a problem personally with mini quiches that just have a crust at the bottom. I don't see the need to have the crust be on like all side of the mini quiche. If you guys think that it's fine for me to just make mini quiches with crusts at the bottom, I will gladly uh, go ahead and do just that. Uh, but if you think that I should make more of an effort to have a mini quiche crusts on the side, I will go out of my way to figure that out as well. What do you guys think? Crusts on the bottom or crusts on the bottom and sides? Uh, let me grab another quick glass of water. I totally buy a crustless side quiche over a full crust. All right, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that. This is not exactly what I had in mind, uh, but I think that this will just be easier and quicker than trying to figure out how to uh, create a side crust quiche, as was the original plan. Uh, let's go ahead, let's spray some more tins. I'm, so the problem is, is that we have to make a total of 60 of these today. If I can get 20 uh, discs of dough out of uh, one of these things uh, of pie crust dough that I prepared, that's perfect, because I have a total of three of them. So 20 times three, you got 60 there. Mm. But I'm beginning to think it might be a little bit close. 
Now let's not jinx it. We're just gonna kind of continue trucking forward and we'll figure out things as we go. Of course, there's a lot of pieces of uh, pie crust dough that's sort of being left on the side here. We'll be sure to bunch those pieces up as well so that we can use them too. Let's turn this thing around so we can have a look at the pieces that are not yet sprayed down. Probably could have cut that one a little bit better. It's all right though, we're making our way there. That's 10. I'm, I suspect I might not be able to reach 20 with this one, but we'll go as far as we can. At the end of the day, if we need to use a couple of those paper uh, muffin holders, that's just what we're gonna do. All right, so this is the first 12. This is our second set of 12. I'm gonna go ahead and spray down the first half of them. There we go. I'm not being particularly concerned about making sure that I cut exactly circular pieces here. I'm just trying to cut pieces that are more or less uniform. Please stop, I'm drowning in my own saliva. Can't stop now. Like I said, I wanna try and see if I can finish this stream up by seven, which, spoiler alert, probably is not gonna even happen. And so I have to truck on ahead. The show must go on. All right, that's 12 plus 315. I don't know if the remaining dough that I have here is going to amount to five more, uh, but I'm going to try my best. So real simple, I'm just gonna kind of like bunch this stuff together, try and form it once again into a single immersive hole. Again, we're gonna apply a little bit of extra flour to our rolling pin and we are going to roll this bad boy out. Well, this track is, sounds pretty good. If I can get at least four spheres out of this, I'll be happy. All right, number one. There we go. Number two, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make that piece and I'm gonna add on uh, this part over here. So it's a little awkward, but ultimately taste-wise, it'll be the same when it comes out of the oven. 
at the end of today's baking extravaganza. So that's six over there. Six plus 12, 18. I think we can get uh, two more pieces out of this. Actually, let me hold on just a quick sec. I'm gonna use my pizza cutter to just cut it in half more or less like this and we'll shape our remaining two pieces out of that. Huh. Yeah, I, I just wanna say here, right here, real quick right now, I always have been really bothered by the whole like flour, F-L-O-U-R-F-L-O-W-E-R. Do, do you see how long it took me to say that? Like I've always found that really confusing to be totally honest. And it's one of those things where like, even in conversation, I'll be talking to people or I'll be hearing people talking about flour and it will trip me up. Like that stuff, that stuff needs to go. That needs to go. And so what I'm doing right here is I'm just trying to bunch up my dough into like a vaguely circular shape so that I can put it in the muffin tin. All right. Like I said earlier, it might not look perfect, but taste-wise, it's gonna be okay. All right, uh, so that's a total of eight there and 12 there, which means that we indeed uh, were able to extract uh, 20 crusts out of that one piece of dough, which is good. Uh, let me add just a little bit more flour to the counter over here. Um, we have four muffin tins over here to fill and also an additional six over here. So that means we got 10, which means that I am going to grab um, half of one of the two mounds of dough that we got in the fridge. Uh, and the other half I'll put back in the fridge until we need to use them next. Uh, Spike says, my favorite is that your brain knows the difference between uh, tear his heart out and one teardrop. That stuff doesn't really bother me because at least it's pronounced differently. Uh, here we go. Actually, for something that's this big and moundy, maybe I'll just use a knife. Give me a quick second. go. Okay. And this thing is so nice and flaky looking. It's kind of hard to show on the side. All right. Really flatten this guy out like that one crocodile meme. We want to get this guy nice and thin so that we can extract as many crusts out of this guy as we possibly can. All right. There we go. One in there. One in there. That one was a little bit lacking in dough compared to some of its brethren, but we'll make it work. I'm sure that it will cook just nicely in the oven. Okay, there we go. Uh, I guess I can just put it like that for the time being. All right, have our last six 
muffin things to fill. Once all six of these will have been filled, uh, we'll have a grand total of uh, 30 pie crusts, uh, which will be exactly half of the total amount that we need uh, to make 8-Bit Mario's face. There we go. There we go, there we go. There we go. Oh, hold on a sec. I slightly kicked over the foot pedal when I did that. Let me get that back into place real quick. There we go. bunch of little remaining pieces of dough here. Some of these pieces I'm actually going to transfer over to the uh, muffin tins that I was working on previously because some of them definitely got a little bit less dough than the others they've previously worked on. There we go. Uh, a lot of it though will go to this final tin over here. This might not be exactly a circular shape but we'll make it work. There we go. All right. Uh, you know what? With this last little bit of dough over here, I don't think I need to add it to uh, the previous thing that I was working on. So I'm just gonna roll this up into as much of a cohesive ball as I can. And I'm gonna shove this bad boy back in the fridge to firm up a little bit more so that we can use them later on. Okay. All right, well, now that we've gotten that out of the way, uh, next step uh, is we need to weigh down our pie crusts with some chickpeas uh, so that we can cook them in the oven uh, without fear of them accidentally rising as we do so. Uh, let's bring our pie crusts back in view over here. Uh, here we go. So real simple, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut ourselves some pieces of wax paper. Exactly how much I will determine on the fly. And we will put atop of that wax paper a whole bunch of dried chickpeas. Originally, I purchased the dried chickpeas for a completely different recipe that ended up not working out last year. And so I decided to repurpose the dried chickpeas for something like this. We go. We just want to make sure that it's sort of properly weighed down so that we don't run into any issues later on. Uh, 
<sighs> These pieces are probably too small, so we'll discard them. I don't think it's the biggest thing in the world if some of the dried chickpeas accidentally touch the thing, but they're not supposed to touch them while they're being baked. paper. go. Right, next one. Okay, well, we can always add some more chickpeas later on, but more or less we're done here with the first 12. Of course, later on, uh, when we do our next 30 of these things, we can always reuse the chickpeas from the first round. go. I feel like the further we go into this thing, the better and faster I'm getting at it. 
more or less. This piece is too, too small. We'll swap it out for a bigger one. One quick sec. You kind of hate it when the chickpeas fly out of your hands as you're trying to put them in a new tin. There we go. Man, I thought that we were never gonna use up these dried old chickpeas, but lo and behold, we found a way to use them all up. Eight more. Hold on a sec, quick piece of wax paper just ever so daintily fell on the floor. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this over here because I can't really put it on top of the other pie crust thing for the time being. Yeah, this isn't big enough. Right, just gotta get six more. We can finally put these godforsaken pie things in the oven. There we go.
we go. And this will be for our final two uh, pie crusts. Long last. just grab these other two things here real quick. I'm just going to make sure that each and every one of them has enough chickpeas to go around so that the crusts underneath them are sufficiently Ooh. covered. Go one little guy there tried to escape. There are also a couple on this one that I think might be slightly touching the crust, and we can't have that happening. Uh, okay, these guys over here, it look like they could use a few more. Uh, oops, wrong one. Uh, sorry guys, I know that it's taking a while to get to the actual quiches proper, but we're getting there. We are getting there. I wonder if next time it would actually be a bit easier if I put the paper things on top instead. We'll see. All right, well, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's open up the oven. Don't worry, the other ones are coming in just a sec. Right. Last but not least, there we go. Echo, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. All right, uh, with that finally taken care of, uh, next step is for us to actually work on the uh, quiches that will serve as the yellow part of Mario's face. Uh, let's see here. So we're gonna need uh, six large eggs, uh, three fourths a cup of milk. We have 2% milk, um, three fourths a teaspoon of salt, uh, one fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper. So it's a cup of cooked ham, but obviously we're gonna be using um, bacon or in our case. Uh, one and a half cups of shredded cheeses. We're gonna be using a mixture of mozzarella and uh, cheddar. And finally, three tablespoons of green onions. Uh, we are gonna be using onions uh, but I've decided that I'm gonna actually save the onions for another one of the quiches. So these quiches will just have actually, you know what? They will have green onions. No, wait a minute, hold on a second. The specific recipe here calls for green onions, which are not the same as normal yellow onions. So no, these ones are not gonna have onions. All right, uh, let's see here. In a large bowl, whisk together the eggs, milk, salt, and pepper. Pretty straightforward. Uh, let's grab our eggs. Here we go. If we have any uh, leftover uh, quiche filling, we can of course use those for other things later on. Um, let's see here. Uh, six large eggs. Let's go ahead and let's do it. Mm. 
number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Uh, and finally, number six. I'll leave those egg uh, shells in there for now. We can always put them away later. Give me just a quick sec. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, next up, our three fourths of a cup of milk. Let's go ahead and let's add that. How are our little guys doing? Oh shit, whoops. Uh, give me just a quick second. Something appears to be burning. Uh, or at least something is emitting a lot of smoke, and it's not entirely clear what is. Uh, let me turn down the... There we go. I'm going to just turn it down to one real quick. Uh, it's entirely possible that the thing that might be burning might actually be the pizza stone. There might be like a little bit of residue left on it that didn't get properly dealt with previously. Actually, you know what? I think it might also be the vegetable spray. I think that might have been emitting a bit of steam. Well, we'll continue to keep an eye on it, and I will continue to uh, keep the fan above the oven going in case we should need it. Because that's a lesson that you don't want to overuse the amount of cooking oil when you do these sorts of things. All right, that's about three fourths of a cup. In you go. That will probably become the measuring cup that we exclusively use uh, for milk products. Uh, hello, Silas White 32. How's it going? All right, now I'm in the process of making some uh, yellow quiches with bacon mixed in, uh, specifically turkey bacon. And while that's happening, I'm cooking some of the uh, quiche crusts in the oven. I'm doing pretty okay. This is um, turning out to be a little bit more of a bigger undertaking of a stream than I was originally planning. I thought an hour in, I would already be uh, done with my first bash of quiches, but clearly that is not the case. All right, that's about, the recipe calls for us to use uh, a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. I guess I could crank a couple more things in there. There we go. Uh, and next we got to use three fourths a teaspoon of salt. Uh, let me use the half a teaspoon first and then I'll switch to the quarter one. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, Charisma is raiding with a party of 10. Oh shit. Hello to Charisma and hello to everybody else that has come to hang out on my stream right now. Very much appreciate the unexpected raid. Thank you so much. Uh, give me just a quick second because my uh, measuring spoons are getting all sorts of mixed up while I try to add this salt uh, to this quiche mix, which I'm in the process of making right now. Hope that your days are all going well uh, right now, according to this recipe. Um, How's it coming along? Uh, it's coming along pretty good. I had to spend a lot of time up front um, preparing um, these uh, quiche pie crusts in the oven, uh, which um, they're emitting a little bit of steam because I had to use a little bit too much um, uh, grease to kind of grease them up. Uh, you're getting ready for Costco. Costco is always a good time. I love to get the pizzas from the uh, kind of Costco hot counter. That's always great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have whisked together our eggs, our milk, and our salt and pepper. Uh, all the other recipes we can mix into our bowl after they've been whisked together. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So real simple, we're just making sure that all of our eggs and our milk and our spices are nice and cohesive and our quiche mixture takes on a nice sort of yellow hue, as you can see. Okay. 
The hot dogs are also pretty good too, by the way. The one thing is, so like the hot dog combo, if I recall correctly, is like a buck fifty for a hot dog and a drink, something like that. Love the hot dog, but I'm not always in the mood for like a sugary drink to accompany it. I think it's a great value, but I personally would prefer to have the option of just a hot dog. Um, but that's just me. All right, this is our turkey bacon. Shit. One of them fell on the floor, so I'm just going to grab myself a paper towel real quick, and we're just going to wet it, and we're going to wipe down that bacon real quickly. Uh, yeah, I think that sometimes, you know, water is nice in place of other fountain drinks, but, you know, a, a good, uh, my favorite fountain drink is iced tea. I'm a big iced tea fan. Uh, okay, how are we going to do this? I guess we'll just go ahead and we'll start cutting the bacon into strips this way and then we'll kind of cut it into smaller pieces from there. It actually would have been better if the bacon was being cut uh, straight on the cutting board ahead of time, but... Okay. In goes the bacon. Don't worry, these guys over here will join their brethren in the soupy egg mix very soon. Let's see, how are our little pie crusts doing? Oh. Got to make sure that they absorb the moisture well. Okay. Uh, Costco calling, are you going to post a pic of the complete snacks? Oh, of course. Trust me, you will see pictures of the uh, Mario Quiche creation I'm in, the, I'm in the process of making right here and right now uh, on Twitter, mm. on Instagram. I'll post a video on TikTok. Uh, on all three of those platforms, I am at Alex Kazina, A-L-E-X-K-O-Z-I-N-A. Uh, -E so be sure to find me there if you want to see what the dishes look like after the fact. Uh, of course, I will also be posting a VOD of this stream uh, after the fact, which you'll be able to view uh, in the video section of this channel here on Twitch as well. So you can always look forward to that if that's more your flavor. Thank you once again for the raid and hanging out, Charisma. You are a true gent, full of charisma, power, energy, and love. And I very, very much appreciate it. Okay. Okay. There we go. The rest of the bacon is in. It's currently about five minutes left on the pie timer. Uh, hello, Shaker Jeans. Oh, Charisma sucks. See, what? Dude, I love coming to your streams. The setup is amazing and I'm in love with the food. Thank you, Charisma. Ah. I'm just gonna mix up our bacon real quick. There we go. All right, now that our meats are mixed into our uh, egg mixture, what's the next step? Um, we have to um, sprinkle one cup of the cheese and uh, our green onions, if we're using them. We're not using green onions, so. Uh, into the pie crust and pour the egg mixture on top, and then we sprinkle the remaining one half of cheese mixture on top of the egg mixture. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so let's see here. Yeah, so we gotta grate ourselves uh, a cup and a half of cheese. Thankfully, I already have a bell grater and a plate right here on the counter. Uh, let's go grab some of the cheeses from my fridge. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is a mixture of mozzarella and cheddar. Uh, we actually have some other cheeses uh, but those will be unveiled later as they are needed. Let me just, we're gonna have to take our uh, pie crusts out of the oven soon. So I'm just gonna set up these hot plates here for when we need to do so. 
just so that we have those at the ready. Coming along real quick. All right, uh, first things first, we have a little chunk of cheddar over here that was never used up, so we're gonna use uh, that up first. Give me a quick second. Now the idea, right, is that we're trying to grade up a cup and a half of this stuff. Um, inevitably, I suspect that we'll probably end up grading a little bit more cheese than was originally planned, um, but uh, if we do, that's okay, because we'll be able to use some more of that cheese with the other two quiche mixtures that we're currently working on. This right here is some saputo mozzarella. Uh, I'm just gonna use the cutting board right over here by the sink to cut out a piece of this thing that we will be grating up. Currently have less than two minutes left on the pie crusts. This right here is approaching a cup and a half, but I'm gonna continue grating just a little bit more. Plus we also wanna add a little bit more cheddar in here, right? So. Uh, there we go. more mozzarella and then we'll switch over to cheddar. Actually, I think we might need to make, take our uh, pie crusts, which we're pre-baking out of the oven first. Okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna need to take our pie crusts out first. So I'll just, I'll put the cheddar cheese that I have over here on the cutting board so that we can get ready to cut it. Uh, but first, pie crusts. Absorb up some of that steam. Echo, turn off the timer. All right, without further ado, we're gonna take these things out of the oven one by one. go. There we go. Uh, and our final one right over here. There we go. Uh, and we're just going to let them cool down for a quick second. Uh, while that's happening, I'm actually going to lower the temperature of the oven a little bit. Uh, we had to um, raise the temperature of the oven to about 425 degrees Fahrenheit to do the uh, pre-baking of the crusts. Uh, but for when we cook the quiches themselves, we're actually going to need it more at like 375. I'm actually going to set it to uh, 385. There we go. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and let's cut ourselves a small piece of cheddar that we'll be using. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna grate that thing in here. There we 
go. Now, real simple, I'm just gonna try and get as much of the cheese that's currently in this bell grater onto the plate underneath it. I'm gonna just, with our hands, kind of mix up the cheeses real well so we have an equal distribution of mozzarella and cheddar. Uh, and now we're gonna measure out a cup of this stuff. There we go. I'm gonna pour the cup in here. We're gonna put this plate over to the side. There we go. We have ourselves a nice cheesy ass quiche. Uh, any more ingredients that we got to put in here? Outside of the green onions, uh, it would seem no. So all we got to do now is we got to put these into our little uh, egg tarts, uh, and then we're going to sprinkle a half a cup of remaining cheese on top of them before we put them in the oven. Uh, we're still waiting for our pre-baked a uh, little quiche crust to cool down though. So we will hold off on that for the time being. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we got two other types of quiches to make for our Mario here. As you can see, uh, Mario's face is composed of three different colors. We got the yellow for his skin, uh, the greenish brown for his uh, eyes and hair, uh, and of course the red for his hat. Um, we're actually, let's hold off on the green for the time being. Let's focus on the red. Um, so for the red, uh, we're gonna be making a tomato quiche. Uh, we are going to need to use a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Uh, we are going to need to use um, one half of a medium onion that has been finely chopped. We got some onions over here. They're all small onions though, damn it. Why, why all those have to fall out at that exact moment, huh? Uh, what else we're gonna need to use? Uh, uh, fortunately, the text here is really small. Uh, two to three garlic cloves that are minced. Of course, that'll go uh, real easily uh, if we mince them with our bell grater. Uh, we're gonna need uh, a uh, 14 and a half ounce can of chopped tomatoes in juice. Uh, we got one of those uh, right here, Alimer. Um, this one is how much? Uh, 28 ounces, so we're gonna have to use half of this thing. Uh, we are going to need to use uh, one tablespoon of tomato paste. We got some tomato paste right here. Uh, we're gonna need to use um, a pinch of sugar, some salt to taste, a sprig of fresh basil of rosemary. Uh, it's not fresh, uh, but I do indeed have some dried rosemary right over here. Uh, we're going to need to use um, some freshly ground pepper, two eggs, two egg yolks, um, three fourths of a cup of low fat 2% milk, which we got in the fridge. Uh, we're gonna need to use two ounces of Gruyere cheese, which we got in the fridge. Uh, and finally, one ounce of Parmesan cheese, which is about one uh, fourth of a cup. All right, uh, let's see here, steps. So what we gotta do here is we actually gotta uh, cook up our onion a little bit. Uh, I already contaminated this uh, pan by unfortunately using it for the bacon earlier. So we're gonna be uh, retiring this bad boy for the time being. I'm actually gonna put him over here on the counter. Uh, let's bring this guy back over here. Uh, let's see. It says that we gotta use half of a medium onion. So like I said earlier, I'm just gonna equate that to one full small sized onion. Uh, let's bring our cutting board back into the fray. We're gonna actually flip our cutting board over so that we don't have a, any bacon interfering with this uh, particular quiche. Uh, I'm gonna take off as much of the skin as we can ahead of time. There we go. go. Uh, you know what? While we're cutting this bad boy up, let's go ahead and let's actually heat the oil over the stove first before we do anything else. 
Um, let's see here. I'm gonna heat it to like medium, medium-ish. Uh, let's see, how much olive oil do we need? Uh, one tablespoon, okay. Real simple. Just gonna grab our one tablespoon measuring spoon. Uh, let me bring the stove view in real quick. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that on the frying pan. Et voila. We're gonna let it slowly but surely heat up. Mm. Ugh. Okay, bringing things back over here to the counter. I'm gonna cut the ends off of our big onion boy. And we're gonna mince this bad boy up real good. Et voila. Okay. Trying to be very careful with the onion because it makes me real watery if I'm not careful. Uh, gonna just turn up the heat on the olive oil just a little bit more. Uh, let me just wash my hands real quick because I haven't washed them in a quick second. There we go. Uh, let's consult the instructions again. Uh, let's see here. Heat the olive oil over medium heat in a wide, heavy saucepan and add the onion. Uh, cook, stirring until it begins to soften, two to three minutes. Add a pinch of salt and continue to cook, stirring often until tender, about five minutes. Uh, meanwhile, pulse the tomatoes in a food processor uh, fitted with a steel blade or in a mini processor. Uh, three, add the garlic to the onions and cook, stirring and fragrant about 30 seconds. Uh, add to the canned tomatoes and turn up the heat slightly. Uh, add the tomato paste, uh, sugar, salt, uh, basil or rosemary sprig and thyme and simmer uh, briskly, stirring often until the tomatoes have cooked down and smell fragrant about 15 minutes. Okay, so we got a lot going on here. Uh, let's see, is our olive oil where we need it to be? Yeah, I think it's good. All right. In go the onion. Not simmering just yet, but the heat will pick up in just a minute and we'll be good. Uh, I'm gonna put the tongs that we used for the bacon over here for the time being. Knife is going back here. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and let's process up our tomatoes. Uh, where is it? Here we go. So the idea is that we're supposed to use uh, 14 and a half ounces uh, of this stuff. And this thing is 28 ounces, so we got to use half of it. That's the plan. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to can open this thing up. Why is it called a can opener? It's because you can open it. Get it? I'll stop. Mm. Onions are beginning to sizzle. I'm gonna make sure that they're kind of properly and nicely turned around. There we go. Uh, hmm. it would be good. We have the big blender here, but I need to use one of the smaller food processors. Here we go. Here we go.
I don't want to tip this thing over and accidentally create a huge mess. So I'm being very careful. I'm just trying to figure out from the thing if I've used half of it or not. I can use a little bit more. There we go. Let's see. There we go. I think that's about half. I think we've used up about half of it. There we go. All right, the rest of this stuff I will temporarily put in the fridge, but I'm gonna to try to make sure that I properly package it and put it away in a different container later. Uh, onions are beginning to sizzle. I'm just making sure that they're not burning. All right, let me consult the, uh, where is, here we go. I thought the phone was in my pocket for a sec there. Uh, let's see here, uh, cook stirring until the onions begin to soften two to three minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and let's add our onion, or, uh, sorry, our salt. We're supposed to do this for like five minutes or so. There we go. This might be a little bit more than a pinch, but it's fine. Echo, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. All right. Let's move this thing out of the way once again. Uh, per the instructions. Um, uh, while the onions are being cooked, we need to pulse our tomatoes in a food processor. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's do that. Mm. <sighs> This is gonna be, oh, sorry, I thought a splash of tomato fell on the ground. It was nothing. Gonna be a little bit on the loud side, but we'll get through this real quick. Cause these tomatoes are very soft to begin with, so it doesn't take much time to really pulse them, if you know what I mean. I think that's more or less it. I think they're all pretty well pulsed. Didn't take any time at all. Uh, let me just do one last quick little pulse just to be 100% extra sure. There we go. Uh, and that is that for the tomatoes. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the blender back to where it came from. Okay, let's bring the stove view back in big again. Well, let me turn down the temperature just a little bit because the onions are not supposed to be singed like this at this point. Turned it down to low. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, next, we gotta add the uh, garlic to the onions and cook stirring until fragrant, about 30 seconds. Add the canned tomatoes and turn up the heat slightly. Add the tomato paste, sugar, salt, uh, basil or rosemary sprig and thyme and simmer briskly, stirring often until the tomatoes have cooked down and smell fragrant about 15 minutes. Uh, okay, let me just grab, I realize I don't have any sugar on the counter, so I'm just gonna grab that. We only need a pinch of it, but I might as well respect the recipe's wishes. Where is the sugar? Give me a quick second. There we go. It's hidden behind the crackers. Oh, there we go. That rice cake was trying to squeeze out, uh, but I prevented it from doing so. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and let's grate up our garlic real quick. Uh, we have about two minutes left on the timer, which is plenty of time for us. Uh, 
Okay. First thing first, we gotta push down our garlic like such, because that makes it easier to remove the skins. Oh, this garlic looks kind of old. I'm gonna forego using that one. This garlic, oh, what the hell? This is like two garlics in one. It also feels kind of old. Let me, let me grab two fresher ones. This final piece of garlic is kind of old looking. Let me grab one more one from here that will be a little bit more fresh. One second. There we go. All right. Cutting off these stems. Well, it looks like our timer is about to go off a little bit ahead of schedule. Well, and I'm just temporarily taking the onions off heat because they cooked a little bit too fast. Echo, turn off the timer. All right. This turns off this piece of garlic is too old too. All right. It'll just be this small one and this big one. get some of this garlic mince out from this side of the thing. There we go. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna schlep this into our onion mixture. Uh, Echo, set a timer for 30 seconds. 30 seconds, starting now. Just gonna make sure that we kind of cook this around nicely for 30 seconds. Make sure that it becomes nice and fragrant. There we go. Uh, with that taken care of, next step is we gotta pour our tomato puree in. Echo! Turn off the timer. Uh, let's bring in the full stove cam view for this. We're gonna turn up the heat just a little bit. There we go. We're gonna nicely stir up our onions, garlic, and uh, tomato puree up so that they're a nice single a kind of cohesive mixture like such okay uh, next step what do we got to add next uh, add the canned tomatoes and turn up the heat slightly add the tomato paste sugar salt basil or rosemary spray and thyme and simmer briskly stirring often until the tomatoes have cooked down and smell fragrant or about 15 minutes uh, okay uh, let's go ahead and let's open up our tomato paste can. It's bubbling real nicely, uh, but we want to make sure that we're tending to it as often as we possibly can. While we cook it for the next 15 minutes or so, we'll be uh, getting the uh, quiche crusts ready for everything to go into the oven for the first batch. Okay. 
Echo, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. There we go. Tomato paste is in. I'm gonna turn down the heat just slightly because I feel like it was maybe bubbling up just a little bit too much. There we go. Uh, what's next? I'm gonna put this in the fridge as well until we uh, need to use it next. Again, I will be make sure to kind of properly store it this time around. Uh, unlike the last uh, small can of tomato puree, which I did not get around to, uh, pinch of sugar. Let's go ahead and let's add that. There we go. That was almost a little bit more than a pinch of sugar, but I'm sure it'll turn out right all the same. I'm gonna turn on the fan to level one because it's emitting quite a bit of steam. There we go. Uh, what's next? We put our sugar in. Uh, next we got our salt, our rosemary, and our thyme. Uh, how much salt we gotta put in there? Uh, it just says salt to taste. Man, this thing is really bubbling up. Hold on a sec, let me turn down the heat even more. There we go. All right. Uh, next up, we have to put in a little bit of rosemary. It says a sprig. We don't have a sprig. This is dried rosemary. So we're just going to put in a small amount. There we go. That looks... It's dried rosemary, so we have to be sparing. We can't use a whole ton of it. I think that'll be good. Whew. Some... Some of the bubbles accidentally squirted on me and that was not fun. Uh, let's see. Last but not least, we got our thyme. Uh, it says that we should use a teaspoon or half a teaspoon of dried thyme. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna use that half of a teaspoon. There we go. Looks like a healthy amount of time. I'm gonna make sure that it's nicely, properly incorporated into our tomato mixture. There we go. Uh, okay, what's next? Uh, so now that we've got all that stuff in there, uh, we basically have to make sure that we stir often until the tomatoes have all been cooked down and smell fragrant. About 15 minutes, this is what we set the timer for about four minutes ago. Uh, we can uh, taste and adjust the amount of salt and add pepper after the 15 minutes are up. Uh, when we remove it from heat, um, we can remove the rosemary sprig if we were using a sprig. Uh, and then what else? Uh, let's see here. That says we should have about a cup of sauce. Uh, preheat the oven to da da da. Beat the eggs and egg yolks in a large bowl. Uh, brush the bottom of the crust with a small amount of beaten egg and pre-bake. We did the pre-baking. Remove from the oven and allow to cool for five minutes. Uh, beat the milk into the eggs. Add a half a teaspoon of salt. Fresh ground black pepper to taste and beat together, stir in the cheeses and the tomato sauce and combine well. All right, well, we can go ahead and we can, I guess, start preparing our 
eggs while we allow our tomato sauce to cook. Uh, we got ourselves uh, another big bowl here that we're gonna be using. Uh, I brought out a bunch of spoons to use at the bowls, but clearly those aren't really of much use, so we'll be using this fork instead. Uh, unlike the previous quiche, uh, this one uh, does not use six eggs. Instead, it uses two eggs and two egg yolks. So, I mean, kind of the same, but not exactly. Number one. And number two. Et voila. All right, now we got our egg yolks. Let's grab our uh, compost recycling bin for this part, because it's always easier with that. Also, we'll just stir up our sauce a little bit. Again, make sure that nothing is burning. We have to compost a lot of uh, cardboard, which is why that is what you're currently looking at. Okay. Get that egg white in there. There we go. There we go. All right, there we go. Our first egg yolk came out pretty well. No major mishaps. Uh, number two. There we go, egg yolk number two. Not much of an issue. Uh, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick and we're gonna tend to the sauce again. <sighs> this is a real adventure today. today's stream. I suspect, I said originally that I'm trying to aim to complete the stream for seven. I suspect that it will probably be more eight at the rate at which we're going. Mind you, we've gotten a lot out of the way, but we still have a lot of ways to go. Uh, we have to blind bake our second round of uh, quiche crusts. And of course, that's before we even put our first round of quiche crusts in the oven. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got our eggs and our egg yolks in the thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we need to uh, beat our milk into the eggs and we add one half a teaspoon of salt and ground pepper. Uh, let's see here. Uh, how much milk we use in three fourths of a cup, perfect. Which is exactly as much as last time, which makes it work out even better. Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, let's grab our salt. Now, I'm gonna use a little bit more salt than was originally intended. So pour some of that back in there. Uh, and grind a little bit of black pepper in here. There we go. Tend to the tomato sauce real quick. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and let's mix up our second round of eggs. Also, you know what? I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit because while we have been cooking along our tomato sauce nicely, we are supposed to arrive at eventually just one cup of the stuff. And it's looking like we actually have a little bit more than a cup at the moment. Uh, 
There we go. Just really want to kind of do our best to make sure that we have a nice reduced batch of tomato sauce mixture. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, uh, we have successfully beaten together our eggs and our milk. Um, let's see here. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we are supposed to stir our cheese and the tomato sauce into the mixture both at once. Um, let's go ahead and let's then begin working with our cheeses. We need uh, half a cup of grated Gruyere cheese and a fourth of a cup of grated Parmesan. All right. Uh, might as well, give me a quick second. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wipe down this bowl, uh, or rather this plate, uh, and we're gonna use that for our parm. Give me a quick second, there we go. Uh, I brought out some of the parm that we currently have. Here we go. <sighs> Grating parm does take a little bit of time, a little bit of time, but the results are always very yummy. This is a little bit under a fourth of a cup. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get as much remaining Parmesan cheese as I can out of this like Parmesan cheese rind. And then I'll use that to top up my cup. And that'll be that. Problem is, is that it's really hard to kind of grate this stuff when you're so close to it, but I think that's probably as much as I can get out of it. All right. Tomato sauce will probably be ready quite soon. Echo, how much time is left on the timer? You have one minute and 50 seconds left. On one minute and 50 seconds left, okay. Uh, where is, here we go. Oh, shit, almost spilt out. Uh, thankfully, that did not happen. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and let's grate up our Gruyere cheese. Uh, we can use, you know, we can probably just reuse the same plate that we use for the parm. Let's go ahead and let's use that. Scissors. So I can really, here we go. There we go. We need to uh, cut up a half a cup of this stuff or rather grate up half a cup of this stuff. All 
I'm thinking that this block will probably, it won't be uh, full on half cup, but it will be close. I'm trying to think, Echo, turn off the timer. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it on the same burner, but we're just gonna turn off the heat. I'm trying to think, should I use the big grates for this or should I use the small grates? Let's, let's do the big grates. Speed things up. It, all it says in the instructions is we need to make sure that the Gruyere cheese is well packed in its measuring cup, so it doesn't really matter what size the grates are, so long as it's well packed. Uh, this part's a little bit tough to, don't worry, we'll grate it down. Okay, that's what that little sliver of Gruyere looked like, grated down. It does indeed look close to half a cup, but let's actually put it in here and see. It's more like a third of a cup at this point. I'm gonna cut another small piece. suspect that this will probably get us to about half a cup. All right. Let's see. Now, this is definitely well over half a cup of the packed stuff. Uh, let's see over here. Looks like our tomato sauce is doing well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off heat. Uh, turn off of that. Uh, let's see here. Just gonna temporarily uh, put the rest of the Gruyere cheese back in the fridge because we're not gonna need to use it for now. Uh, let's go ahead, let's add this to our second egg mixture and really mix it up real well. All right, I think that the, the cheese is still a little bit clumpy, but I think we more or less got it to the point that we needed it to get to. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's uh, measure out some tomato sauce. Recipe says we are supposed to have about a cup of sauce at this point. Whoops, it's spilling a little bit, damn it. Uh, let me, shit, and it's also dropping on the floor. Not my intention. I should have used a spoon from the beginning. Actually, I think it got reduced to slightly less of a cup even, but I mean, that doesn't particularly change things. Uh, let's go ahead and let's pour that bad boy right in there. And we get the rest of the tomato sauce from the frying pan. There we 
go. Ah, good job measuring cup for waiting so patiently with the tomato sauce I'd put in there. Uh, let's move the stove view out of the way. Seems how we no longer need it. And let's uh, mix this bad boy up. There we go. We have ourselves a very red, very tomatoey uh, quiche mixture at the ready. And it seems like most of the Gruyere is pretty evenly distributed at this point, so that's good as well. Uh, okay. Let's check our phone. Uh, all right. Um, Beat the milk into the eggs, add the salt, pepper, add the cheese, add the mayo sauce, combine well, scrape into the crust using a rubber spatula to scrape out every last bit from the bowl. Uh, place the tart on a sheet pan for easily handling and place in the oven. Okay, uh, that means that we're basically at the point where we're ready to begin pouring these things uh, into the first round. Uh, let's move some things out of the way. Uh... that there. Okay. I'm going to bring this over here. Um, let's grab ourselves a bowl that we can put the uh, chickpeas into. And we can keep these uh, little pieces of used up wax paper over here on the side to be reused uh, for the next round. Oh, these look so nice. You know, I'm just not gonna put a weight on top of them when I remove these. Okay. Again, huge shout out to the chickpeas for me purchasing them, uh, intending to use them with another cooking project that I've basically more or less forgotten about at this point, uh, laying in my pantry unused for months and then me realizing, oh, I can just use these to help weigh down this pie crust as I cook them. Okay, I'll let all of that out of the way. Uh, let's go ahead and let's bring in our little 8-bit Mario because we got to figure out uh, how many we have to make into just the yellow quiche mixture and how much we're making into the red. All right, if we count the amount of yellow squares on Mario's face, we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, 27, we got 30 total right now. So basically we got to save room at the end for three reds. Uh, hmm, this might be a little bit difficult to do with this. This is actually be a good time to use a ladle or just like a normal spoon. So maybe I'll use that. I'm 
Now I'm beginning to wonder if actually I even have enough quiche filling. Well, I'll have to be sparing and then I can add more to some of the other ones as I go. Hmm, I think it's gonna be a little bit close. I was not thinking that I was gonna to have to use more quiche filling than this. Let me just, I'm gonna put these over to the side here by the sink. Uh, no, we wanna use the bigger one first. Oh shit, didn't expect that to come out. How's the underside look? Pretty good. All right. Et voila. One thing I could do if I'm really kind of running out of quiches, I could like add an extra egg and some extra uh, milk. Oh, again, I th if I did that, I mean, I'm kind of playing with fire, but for sure I'll be able to kind of like help even things out. So I'll have the 27 that I need. Oh, shit. One second, there was a little chickpea in there. Thought I could avoid my grass, but now it's gonna go in the garbage. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to do exactly that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use up all of the uh, initial quiche mixture that's in here and then I will make more of the yellow stuff. Just so that each quiche mixture gets like an even amount of like cheese and bacon. Okay. Uh, let me wash my hands real quick. If I just like let him pour out, this will probably be easier. Damn it. Not my intention. Spoonful there, and one spoonful there. Okay, so now I'm gonna, to the best of my ability, kind of divide up what little quiche mixture I have here amongst the remaining uh, other quiches and the other things. This one, for example, could use a little bit more. This one. Let 
this one right over here. Uh, let's grab the other one. Okay. Uh, I think we're gonna need a, quite a bit more of the quiche mixture to kind of help even the odds here. Let's grab our phone real quick. All right. Let's see here. All right, so uh, let's go ahead. We're gonna make half of what we originally made. So originally we used six eggs, three fourths of a cup of milk, three fourths teaspoon of salt, fourth a teaspoon of black pepper. Uh, we are only going to use uh, three eggs and the corresponding amount of milk and whatnot. Uh, all right. And then from there, we will evenly distribute it into each of the quiche things. Number one, that's it for this carton of eggs. Moving on to the next. of three fourths of a cup of milk is uh, a fraction that I, I'm kind of blanking on at the moment. So I'm gonna try to eyeball this to the best of my ability. It's less than a half though. There we go. Uh, gonna grate the equivalent of an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper in there and half a teaspoon of salt. There we go. give you a better view of the beating process. And there are a lot of things that need to be filled up though. It's possible I might actually need to make even more of this. Let's see. Uh, let me just do a final little beating. All right. And to the best of our ability, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this stuff to the remaining eggs. And it's a little bit more difficult to add when it's just relatively soupy like this. Right. It'd be great if the bowl had like a side of it that was a little bit more narrow. So you could use that for circumstances like this where you gotta pour it. Okay. Uh, I 
think that these are more or less good. Uh, there's a couple here that are a little bit uneven though. We're definitely not gonna be able to fill them up all the way to the top. That's for certain. You know what, I think I might need to end up making twice as much actually. All right, looks like I'm making a double batch. I was not expecting this going into this evening, but lo and behold, here we are. Shit, I did not mean to put four eggs in there. Ah, damn. Okay, well, I'll figure things out. I just wanna make sure that we still have enough eggs left in the fridge for whatever we're doing next. Oh yeah, we have plenty of eggs. All right, perfect. Perfect. Uh, let's grab the milk. Okay, so, cause we put an extra egg in there. And we're gonna have to do half of three fourths of a cup and then three fourths of a cup. I mean, a fourth of a cup. That's my mistake. That'll probably be what we need though. So that's what I'm hoping. Okay. Pepper. There we go. And salt. I'm gonna do a heaping half a teaspoon. There we go. All right. Uh, where's the fork? Here we go. Again, we really want to make sure that this is as nice and cohesive a mix as possible. Uh, let's move the chickpeas out of the way. We'll figure out where to put them later. Make more space. And like last time, we're gonna just kind of daintily pour this stuff in. Okay. Uh, do any of these egg things need any more? I'm trying to make them as even as possible. I think at this point, making them rise all the way up to the top would be difficult, but if they're at least even, we won one battle.
You know what, I'm gonna leave this over here on the side. If I find out later on that actually the tomato mixture needs a little bit more egg in it, I can always add it to that. In fact, you know what? I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that. Because these egg boys over here definitely don't need any more. And I think that the tomato quiches that I'm making actually are gonna need a little bit more if I wanna fill them all up. If we bring in the Mario face yet again, uh, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 red ones. And I think I'll definitely be able to fill up these three guys over here, no problem. But things might get a little bit more hectic later on, so. I don't think it hurt that I added a little bit more to the mix. There we go. All right, well, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and let's add the uh, remaining shredded cheese to on top of the yellow ones. Uh, where is it? Here we go. And there are so many different bowls and plates and whatnots on the counter now. It is far too much. I'm gonna try to distribute it as evenly as possible. Of course, we can always grate some more later on if it turns out that we're running a little bit short. go. Yeah, I think I'm going to need to grate up a little bit more cheese for these boys, which is not a problem because of course I have a crap ton of cheddar and mozzarella on hand. Ah, oh, man, we are really running out of real estate in our kitchen, though. I'm just going to move this over here, and I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of cheese real quick. There we go. I'm gonna bring our plate back over here and we're going to grate the cheeses up real quick. Damn it. Pieces are making it difficult for me to grate them up smaller. Give me a second. There we go. All right, now let's move this guy out of the way. 
ever so briefly. Now we're gonna try to add cheese on top of these guys. Damn it, I think we might need to grate a little bit more cheese. This time around, I'm not even gonna cut them up into pieces. I'm just gonna grate them directly off of the blocks. Give me a sec. It's a lot easier this way at the very least. There we go. Okay. doing our best to kind of make sure that the cheese is contained to just the little quiche things. Okay, all right. All of our quiches are ready to go in the oven, so let's not delay any longer. This took two and a half hours, quite a bit more time than I originally planned for. Um, the uh, tomato quiche recipe says we want to bake in for 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, th uh, the yellow quiche recipe says 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, so we'll play it by, we'll play it by eye. Uh, let's go ahead, let's move that out. Uh, let's move our uh, stove cam in so we can give people a better view of the action. All right, Echo, set a timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, starting now. What we'll do is we'll keep a close eye on the quiches. And if it seems like the quiches are set, like maybe only 20 minutes in, we'll take them out then. Oh, man. This has been a really intensive stream thus far. Lots of stuff going on. Ugh, thank you to everybody for sticking with me all this time. You know what? We deserve a break. Let's go ahead and let's do uh, this stream's Snacks and Colacion segment now to give ourselves a little bit of a pick-me-up before our next uh, particular task. Hello, everybody. Uh, right now, we are in a new Snacks and Colacion segment. Uh, this is where I taste all manner of international goods that I so happen to have found in my purviews throughout the island of Montreal. Uh, today, we're going to be tasting a very special treat that I happen to find at the same uh, international foods market that I've gotten all the other snacks I've tasted uh, thus far on this season of Cozbrous Cooking from. Uh, this is something I actually think I've seen at other international markets and not just this one. Uh, but the moment that I saw it at this particular international market, I knew that I need to give this a shot because I've never given it a shot before. Uh, this uh, is Milka Tendermew. Of course, Milka, uh, a beloved international chocolate brand. Um, and pretty straightforward. It appears that it's a couple of 
uh, cow-shaped cookies uh, with like a kind of chocolatey brownie-ish uh, layer at the bottom and more of like a normal cookie or maybe like cakey-ish base for the center of it. Um, unlike some of the prior things that I've eaten on the show before, um, most of the instructions here are in English, or at least there's like an English version. Uh, it says here on the side, uh, soft cake with alpine milk chocolate pieces, 12%, and a soft uh, cocoa cake layer, 21%. Uh, on the bottom of the box, it says, Milka is committed, Harmony program. Uh, we proudly partner with farmers close to our factories to grow wheat in sustainable way, in a sustainable way. I was concerned for a second that there had been a typo there. Uh, thankfully, there is no typo. Uh, that helps conserve water, cares for the soil, protects biodiversity, and reduces carbon emissions. Uh, learn more about the program on www.harmony.info. Now, here's the thing about this uh, Milka Tender Moo box. Um, I brought it out onto the corner yesterday because I like to prepare for my cooking streams in advance the day before. Uh, and I expected that nobody would try to eat from it, but lo and behold, uh, somebody has already made a hole in the box in the section where you're supposed to make a hole. Now, did somebody take a Milka Tender Moo out of this? I don't know. Uh, it says right here, times five, uh, Milka Tender Moose. So we shall see. Uh, let's see here. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, lo and behold, somebody indeed did steal a Milka Tender Moo. Well, I don't particularly mind because to be honest, it would be a little bit piggish of me to eat all five of these at some point. So I hope they enjoyed it. Would have appreciated it if they had, you know, maybe asked me uh, ahead of time uh, if they could have one of them because the last thing that you want to happen is to put one of these Things out on the counter have them eat all of it and then lo and behold Cozy Bear has no uh, Milka tender mousse to eat on stream um, Let's go ahead and let's open this thing up uh, First impression this is actually quite a bit smaller than what I originally thought it would look like uh, Let me hold on. Let me bring in the uh, super zoomed in camera as you can see, not very big, like to, you know, give perspective on my hand. The uh, box definitely made it look like it was a little bit bigger. Also, the, like, uh, the side of the cow that says milk on it is definitely darker uh, than the box itself as well, like to give a little bit of perspective. Uh, it still looks pretty good. It doesn't look, obviously, again, as impressive as the box, but then again, that's what happens when, you know, you do... Uh, mass-produced factory stuff. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's dig right in. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 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 So the milk of tender moo, let me tell you about a pastry that is indeed quite tender all the way down. Um, I think that what really makes this thing come together is that while both the darker chocolate and the normal uh, like white cake layer are pretty fully tender, there are nice tiny little pieces of chocolate strewn throughout the uh, Milka Tender Moo that I think give that nice little intermittent crunch to the experience of eating it that I really appreciate. Hmm, not bad, not bad, not bad at all. And I appreciate that it's not like overly, like this thing is definitely not um, overly sweet, even though it clearly is very unhealthy for you. Uh, this cow looks a little bit better than the previous one. Its head is not as squished, but it still doesn't really look very cow-like. Uh, let's give it another go. I mean, what can I say? They really do live up to the uh, Tender Moo name. This is definitely, this particular snacks and colacional snack definitely lives up to the name of the snack in question more so than any of the other things I've had in the past. So I definitely have to give it that. And again, I really do love the little pieces of chocolate bits adding like little bits of intermittent crunch to the experience of eating a Tender Moo. 
All right. I'm ready to vote. I mean, I don't think I can give this anything less than a nine. Uh, Milka in general makes really good products and this particular Milka product, well, I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite, is real good. You know, they said they would deliver on the promise of uh, a little soft tender moo cookie shaped like a cow called the tender moo and I feel like they fully delivered on it. So for that, the Milka tender moo gets a nine. All right, and that is the end of Snacks and Colacion. Um, let me grab a quick glass of water. It's about 22 minutes left to go on the quiches. Uh, let's just open up the oven real quick. All right, seems like things are starting to come together. Um, let me just blow my nose real quick and then I will wash my hands and we'll get uh, moving on the spinach quiches. Thanks to everybody for tuning in this late. This stream is definitely going uh, a lot longer than was originally planned, but I am having a good time. <sighs> All right, with that taken care of, let's get to work on our spinach quiches. Here we go. All right, this savory spinach pie uh, is made uh, with a third of a cup of heavy cream, three large eggs, 10 pounces of fresh spinach that have been chopped, uh, half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese, a fourth of a cup of shredded Parmesan, uh, two green onions that have been thinly sliced. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any green onions on hand, so that's not happening. And finally, half a teaspoon of coarse salt and some ground black pepper. Okay. Uh, in, a, in the bowl of a stand mixer or with a hand mixer in a large mixing bowl, beat the cream cheese until smooth. Uh, on medium low speed, beat in the cream and eggs until thoroughly combined. Mix in the spinach, cheeses, green onion, salt, and pepper. Uh, let's grab our mixing bowl that we'll be using. Um, what I'm wondering is if maybe we could reuse one of the previous mixing bowls that we were using actually. Cause you know what? Yeah, I think it would actually be better cause this mixing bowl right here was reused for the first quiche and all it has left is like a little bit of milk and egg residue. So I think it would actually work for the best if we were to use this. Um, let me grab some of our cream cheese, which, uh, spoiler alert, is actually not gonna be cream cheese. Instead, uh, we're actually going to be uh, using, uh-oh. Mm, I think, so here's the plan. Originally, uh, we had a package of brie cheese in the fridge. My plan was that we would use the brie cheese in place of the cream cheese uh, to make our omelet but I think that somebody may have absconded with the brie cheese when they went to the cottage. That's on me, I should have communicated that ahead of time. All right, you know what? If we don't have the brie cheese on hand, what we're gonna do instead is we're actually gonna default on the original, uh, the original quiche recipe that we were using, except uh, in place of the cooked um, Canadian uh, turkey bacon, uh, we're just gonna use a lot of spinach. So we will proceed as normal, uh, which is that we're gonna whisk together our eggs, our milk, and our salt and pepper in this bowl. Uh, but then uh, instead of adding ham and a cup of cheese, we're gonna add uh, spinach and a cup of cheese. Uh, all right. Uh, this carton of eggs is used up. Let's check up on our quiches real quick. Well, it seems like they're coming together quite nicely. Uh, here we go. Got about 18 minutes left to go on our 
30 minute timer. Uh, let's bring the counter view cam in. So like with the first one, we're gonna do six eggs. I suspect we're probably not gonna need to create a second batch um, because uh, if we bring up our 8-bit uh, Mario, as you can see, the uh, green parts of him make up the fewest uh, of his pixels for his face. Um, in total, we only need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So actually that's like pretty close to the uh, red ones. Uh, the red ones, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Actually, that's even more than the red ones, but I suspect, suspect uh, that just the single batch will probably do the trick. All right, egg five. And egg six. Okay. Uh, you know what? While we're not using it, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the tomato quiche mixture in the fridge just so they can remain nicely refrigerated while we're not using it. Uh, and while I had the fridge open, I probably should have grabbed the 2% uh, milk from it. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Three fourths of a cup. And we go. We're gonna add half a teaspoon and then a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. <sighs> there we go. And finally, a little bit of black pepper. There we go. Let's go ahead, let's Stir this bad boy up. Perfect. Uh, okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, I guess we might as well go ahead and shred our cheese ahead of time. Uh, like last time, I'm not even gonna bother to take these things out of their packaging. I'm just gonna grate them as is, like a big chocolate bar. It's too bad that they tend to kind of break apart when you're using them strenuously. Yeah. yeah, that it could only last so long. Uh, let's just move Mario out of there for the time being. I'm not using him at the moment, so. I said I'd be able to do it just with the bar like that, but it became a little bit too difficult. You know, I could grate in some Gruyere cheese here actually, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it simple. Just use mozzarella and cheddar. Mm. 
time. Alright, this time around I'm just gonna cut myself a nice hunk of mozzarella to use. Oh shit, some of these mini quiches are actually really bubbling up. They're almost like muffins. Ooh, you know what it might be actually? I think that the, because I didn't crimp the crust, I think that might actually be causing problems. I think that the crust underneath them might actually be expanding. And that actually is causing the pies atop them to rise. Hmm, it's something I should have remembered to do. There's been so much that's been happening on today's stream that I just, that completely, it completely slipped my mind that I probably should have, uh, I probably should have poked the bottom of the pie crust with a fork before I put the egg mixture on them. Or maybe I'm mistaken and it's actually something else that's causing them to rise. We'll see. All right, I think that's more than enough cheese. And making sure it's nicely distributed. All right, and in goes the cheese. Gonna just mix it up real nicely. And got about 11 minutes left on our 30 minute timer for the first batch of quiches. All right, next up, we gotta cut ourselves some spinach. So let's grab our cutting board real quick. Recipe called for fresh spinach for the other one, so we'll do the same here. According to the packaging on this bag, the spinach is freshly washed, so I'll take its word for it. Uh, real simple. I guess I'll just I'll put it out on the cutting board, and I'll kind of chop it as we go. And then what's, once it's been sufficiently chopped, I'll put it in the measuring cup. We'll pack it in there real good. There you go, that's about maybe a third. Of course, we'll use as much spinach as we need to really kind of arrive at that leafy green uh, color for these particular quiches, because that's what's most important with these ones. This one's a little bit old, so we're gonna do away with it. Okay, it's a little bit under a cup, so we're gonna need a little bit more. Oh, another old one, I'm tossing that out. Actually, this looks like a piece of lettuce, weird. Some of these are rising pretty nicely. Again, it will be interesting to investigate after the fact what made them to rise. Was it just the 
quiches themselves or was it the um, crust underneath them kind of propelling them up? All right, that's basically about a packed cup of the stuff. Uh, let's add it in. I'm doing my best to kind of integrate this stuff well into the quiche mixture, but it's a little bit tough. Just a little bit. I wonder if I should have cut the spinach pieces even smaller. I'm wondering if that would make this an easier time. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut up some more pieces of spinach to add. Oh, oh, hold on a sec. Okay, seems like my fingers are okay. I think I might have cut into my nails a little bit, but my fingers seem like they are unscathed. I think that's about as much spinach as I can add to this thing without it, without its sort of constitution being kind of irreparably damaged. I'm wondering, would it be like a little bit much for me to like go in and like snip some of these pieces of spinach with a scissor maybe to make them a little bit on the smaller side? Feels like it's a little bit, that would be a little bit much, but I have half a mind to do so. Five minutes left on our quiches. I think they might be more or less ready at this point. I don't know how many I'm actually cutting using this technique, but we shall see. They're definitely a bit smaller than they were previously. I think that's about as good as we're gonna do for that. Okay, three minutes left, but I think I might end up actually taking out our mini quiches even sooner than that. Uh, let's try and make a little bit of space. Okay. The like last time we're gonna put some of them over here I might actually put some of them on the stove top as well though. And I'm gonna definitely put at least one of them here so you can see what they look like. 
I'll put one of the big ones on the stove top. I'll put one of the big ones next to it and I'll put one of these small ones here. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. This is a small one. As you can see, they've puffed up quite a bit. And their centers feel pretty, like, pretty done. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say that, yeah, these guys are done. All right, uh, that was about 27 minutes. So I'll have to remember that for next time. Echo, turn off the timer. 30 minutes, timer canceled. All right. As you can see, this is the other batch. As you can see, they've puffed up quite nicely. I think it's good that I took them out now because as you can see, they're beginning to become a little bit on the brown side and we don't want them to become too brown. And here we go. That is the third batch. Okay. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna preheat the oven back to 415 degrees uh, Fahrenheit so that we can pre-bake the next round of crusts. Oh, look at that. It seems like now that they're out of the oven, some of them are actually beginning to shrink a little bit, which is interesting, but doesn't particularly matter for the sake of what we're making tonight. Uh, okay. Uh, let me just see. I'm going to grab myself a fork real quick. Uh, currently at the moment, uh, our current objective is we got to take uh, these mini quiches out of their uh, containers so that we can wash uh, the mini quiche container and so that we can use that to pre-bake our next round of mini quiche crusts. Um, but I don't know if they're ready to be taken out just yet. And that's what we're going to find out. Okay, okay. They seem a little bit, they seem like they're actually a little bit on the soft side, which isn't great because the whole point of us um, pre-baking the crust was so that they their undersides wouldn't be as soft. I suppose if I flipped it over that, and I just, you know, flipped the quiches over after that, that wouldn't hurt. But just trying to figure out how I'm going to do this without really kind of irreparably damaging the constitution of the quiches. Good news is that it seems like the sides haven't really stuck to the tins all that much, which is good. One of the concerns I had was that the quiches would be kind of stuck fast to the sides, but it seems like with a little bit of... Okay, so it's not perfect, but with a little bit of coercing of this knife, it seems like I'm able to more or less dislodge them from the muffin tins. Let's see, still pretty hot. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna just give it a couple minutes to cool down a little bit, and then I'm gonna try to take them out onto this plate. Uh, while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a couple of things of cheese back in the refrigerator. Uh, there's this cheese package, which was originally used for the uh, Parmesan. Uh, we don't need to use that anymore, so that's going back in. Uh, the Gruyere is already inside the refrigerator, but it's not in uh, a, any sort of other Ziploc bag. It's also opened, so I'm just gonna shut this one closed real quick Ooh. with the help of an elastic. Seems like the fridge, sorry, the oven uh, reached its temperature of 415 degrees, so we're good on that front. All 
right. Uh, what else? Uh, we don't need to use any more onions, so those onions will go back in the fridge. There we go. We're leaving the salt and pepper out here because you never know if maybe we might need to use them to make some more uh, quiche filling. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need to use any extra virgin olive oil though, so I'm gonna put that uh, back over here, down below. Let's see. All right. It's just cool enough that I can hold it with my hands, so I'm gonna try and do this the best of my ability. All right, three, two, one. Oh, one of them didn't fully come out. There we go. Well, as you can see, the bottom of one of these ones kind of got stuck to the bottom of the pan, which sucks. Uh, it's going to make the process of cooking it that much harder, but, sorry, cleaning it that much harder, but, mmm, it is real tasty. Okay, so we're going to try to do this with the other two bigger containers. Give me a quick sec. I'm just gonna make a little bit of room by the sink. So that when we're ready to, when we're ready to clean the muffin tins, we have the space to do so. Uh, after all of the quiches, uh, are gonna be on this plate and maybe another plate. I'll put them in the uh, oven so that they can be warmed in there so that when I'm ready to eat them later on, they won't be too cold. Um, give me a quick second. I'm gonna put this guy in the sink and I'm just gonna fill him up with water so that he'll begin to soak so it'll be easier to clean when I need to get around to him. Uh, I'm gonna come back over here. I'm just gonna wipe down this cutting board so that when I plop the mini quiches on here, they'll not get anything really on them. Fingers crossed. Okay. Oh, seems like some of these I can just sort of slot out like that. Perfect. Seems like they cooked better inside of this one, actually. Well, lo and behold, I didn't even need to plop them out onto the thing underneath them. Okay, I think that's, oh, you know what? I can always just pile the quiches on top of each other. That's always an option. <coughs> Let's see if this, these batch of quiches are just as easy to take out as the previous. Yep, they are just as easy. Yeah. I do regret that they turned a little bit more brown than I would have liked. I suspect they'll still be tasty, but 
Problem is, is that I really want to make sure that they resemble Mario's face and get around to it. Oh well, it's an experiment. All right. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna schlep these bad boys in the oven. Uh, sorry, the oven drawer is what I meant to say. All right. Uh, and we're gonna turn the oven drawer on a little bit low. Okay, uh, before we get around to washing our muffin tins, let me take a drink of water real quick. I have to fill up the Brita. Later though. Okay. Just gonna move the chickpeas out of the way. Okay. I'm gonna just try and see if I can do all this basically with just spraying super hot water, that's for the best, honestly. I don't want any soap residue to get into the middle of my baking project. more or less clean. Uh, let me grab myself a dish towel real quick so I can wipe this bad boy down. I do have a dish rack over on the side that I can use for drying things slowly, but unfortunately time is of the essence on today's stream, so we don't have time to just leave it out there to slow dry. go ahead and I'm gonna put this temporarily over here. All right, same thing with the second one. I think this dish towel is becoming a little bit too wet, so I might have to switch to another one at some point. I really like this song that's playing at the moment, by the way. One of my favorites. I think it's a remix of the song, though. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. That one's finished. Let's take care of the last one. The one where it seems like the mini quiches had a little bit more of a difficult time letting go. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of soap. Just a tiny amount. You know what I'm thinking? There's part of me that's fearful that these uh, spinach quiches aren't gonna look green enough when they cook. There's part of me that's tempted to maybe add a tiny itty bitty amount of green food coloring into the mixture there. I know it's cheating, but it will sell the effect that I'm going for way more. And nobody will particularly mind, so. I'm gonna go for it. Uh, hold on a sec. I'm gonna set up the uh, quiche crust to be blind baked first though. While the quiche is blind bake, and while the uh, quiches themselves properly bake, we all have plenty of time to clean up and make any additions that we need to make to today's uh, culinary creations. But right now, we gotta prepare the quiche crusts to be blind baked. Here we go. Ugh, cake and pastry flour. It has been so long since we last used you. And here we are again. Now, where is the rolling pin? Here we go. that around in some pastry dough. Uh, let's grab, first we're gonna grab that small little itty bitty piece of pastry dough uh, that we didn't use last time. go. I 
I think this is good for about one. So we'll go ahead and we'll use it like such. There we go. All right. Uh, next up, uh, this piece right here uh, is half of a wedge. So it should be good uh, for about 10 ish. Got to really make sure I can stretch this bad boy out as much as is possible. At the end of the day, if I don't have enough dough, I can probably figure something out. Okay, there we go. All nicely stretched out. Uh, where is the cup that we were using previously? Here we go. There we go. Three, it's gonna be close, but I think we'll make it. Four. is nine and then all the remaining pieces will probably be able to fashion into an additional one. There we go. Let me just smush these together real nicely so we can do that. So you can probably make two out of these, in fact. That's one. And that is number two. ready there. Now for the final 18, we have our final thing of dough. Oh, man. Let's add a little bit more flour. Okay. 
really need to make sure that we work the so as hard as we possibly can. We need to make sure that we stretch it out thinly and nicely so we can get the final 18 pie crusts that we need out of this bad boy. Ugh. Whoopsies, I don't know if that caught on camera or on mic, but that was a nice little intense fart. Okay, let's spray these bad boys up. Okay. Number one. Two, we just need 18. Number three. Number four. Number five. Six. Number seven. Shit, it seems like it's sticking a little bit to the counter. I'll try to move fast. I want you to react here. Nine. Perfect. Why is it even sticking? I applied quite a bit of flour. Right. The final six are here. Three more. All right, well, it turns out we actually have quite a bit of leftover from this one, which I wasn't expecting. Okay, we're gonna bunch up the remainders real quick. We're gonna wrap it in a nice little thing of plastic wrap and we're gonna schlep that back in the fridge probably to be used tomorrow we'll see Okay, uh, next step, real simple. We gotta go ahead and we gotta put our chickpeas back on top of these things. 
Uh, give me a quick second. Luckily, we saved these papers from earlier, so all we got to do is really simply just put the papers on, put the chickpeas on, and we're more or less good to go. Right. 7.28. So if we're ready to put these in the oven at 7.30, that means we got 15 minutes to blind bake them, so 7.45. We'll probably put the completed batch in the oven at 7.50, which means that tonight's stream will probably close out at around 8.20. All right. It's a marathon, not a sprint. One is down. God, when I was originally conceptualizing this stream, originally I was thinking of making the entirety of Mario out of quiches, and I'm so fucking glad that I decided to just make it Mario's face. That would have been way too much. The current song that's playing, it's called Retro Campfire by Retrovision. Yeah, I used this song when I did the Casino for Kind of Funny uh, directs back in 2020. Jesus. It feels like it was really recently that I did them, but the reality is that it's actually been like close to two years at this point. Probably almost two years. Jesus. Last one. Uh oh, we're missing one. Damn, well I can always just cut another piece, but I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to. I thought I was gonna sneak, oh. <sighs> Let me wash my hands real quick. <sighs> Almost there.
All right. I'm just gonna go ahead and add extra chickpeas where it makes sense to these individual muffin tins, just so that everything is nicely, evenly weighed down. Okay, without further ado, uh, these bad boys are ready to go into the oven. Uh, so they can be, whoops, wrong button. Uh, they can be pre-baked. Echo, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. All right, while I'm down here, I'm just gonna briefly check up on the other quiches. Seem like they're doing okay, remaining nicely warm. I'll get back to them eventually. Okay, uh, first things first, before I forget, I'm gonna bring the counter view back in. And we're gonna add uh, both some cheese and a little bit of green food coloring to our spinach quiches. This extra cheese I'll just keep on the side in case I need to use it later. All right, and now we're gonna add just a tiny little sprig of green food coloring. And then we're gonna see how green that makes our quiche. That definitely made it greener, but I feel like I could use just a skosh more if I really wanna sell the effect. Just a tiny, teeny little ins more. Echo, how much time is left on the timer? You have 13 minutes left on your 15 minute timer. Perfect. All right, we're gonna spend the next little bit just cleaning up around here, putting things away that no longer need to be out so that when the stream is over, I don't have to do uh, that much more clean up. Thank you to everybody for sticking out this long. This has been a longer stream than normal, uh, but I hope that you've been enjoying it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the uh, cake and pastry flour uh, back in there. Uh, these chickpea boys uh, that we did not use today are going back in the same cupboard from once they came as well. Let me just uh, put down the counter view cam. There we go. And I'm. Uh, it would be good if I could actually apply a twist, twist tie to this actually to wrap around it. Don't need to use any more cooking spray, probably. So this stuff is going to go 
into the cupboard from once it came. Uh, man, oh man. We ended up not using any of the uh, paper uh, muffin holders. So these guys are gonna go back uh, in the cabinet from whence they came. Okay. No glad wrap going back in its counter. I'm gonna turn up, turn rather down the temperature on the oven uh, drawer a little bit. Uh, no need to use any more wax paper. Off with that. Uh, you know what? We probably don't need to use uh, the phone that we use above the stove to show whatever it is I'm cooking on the stove. So you know what? I'm just gonna prematurely uh, take this bad boy down. I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn this guy off just so that we're not kind of needlessly using any power for the remainder of the stream. Uh, turns out we have a couple of egg cartons full of eggs. Let's deal with those. Uh, Echo, how much time is left on the timer? You have 10 minutes left on your 15 minutes. Perfect. There's a lot of cleanup to do, uh, but thankfully we have the time to do so. Again, thank you guys for tuning in. I know this is not the most interesting time of the stream, but ultimately cleanup is necessary in order to remain a sane mind. I'm thinking after today's stream, I'm probably gonna take this stuff out to the compost bin. Uh, it is compost pickup tomorrow morning, so might as well do so. Looks like our crusts are baking nicely. Uh, we have some more eggshells to deal with. Don't we? Yes, we do. Voila. And this egg carton over here actually has half normal eggs and half eggshells. go and this other egg carton is gonna go back in the fridge okay uh, what's next well I guess we can put the green food coloring back in the cabinet from whence it came only problem is it got a little bit dirty so I'm actually gonna temporarily keep it out here uh, there's definitely a lot of cups that we can put in the dishwasher so let's go ahead and let's do that uh, including, of course, uh, the two measuring cups that we use. We actually have a big measuring cup that we never use, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the big measuring cup back in here. Uh, but this plate, for example, I forget what we use this specific plate for. I think it might've been for Parmesan cheese. This thing is going in the dishwasher. We can probably turn on the dishwasher, actually, once we put everything in it. I don't remember what I used this cup for. We got two spoons here, one of which I use for the tomato paste, another of which I use for something else. There we go. Uh, a knife and another spoon. Uh, I might want to leave this spoon out though, in case I need help spooning this stuff into the uh, quiche things later. Uh, probably gonna put the rolling pin here by the sink. Uh. I don't think we're gonna to need to use any more mozzarella at this point, so I'm gonna put that in the fridge as well. Echo, how much time is left on the timer? 
You have six minutes and 30 seconds left on the 15 minute timer. Okay. This cheddar cheese is gonna go in the fridge as well with the mozzarella, because I don't think that we need any more of it either. And there we go. This is the Aluminum foil that we use for the bacon. Don't need it anymore, so it's going in the garbage. All right. Let's continue loading up the dishwasher. Uh, this measuring cup right here definitely needs a good cleaning. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna just soak it real quick before we put it back in. There we go. Just so that it's relatively clean when it goes in the dishwasher and then the dishwasher kind of finishes the job. We're gonna end up using this pot over here, but we didn't end up using it either. So the only problem is that I think the top of this got a little bit dirty because of the tomato sauce that we were making earlier. So I'm gonna put the pot away in its cupboard, uh, but this thing will rinse. This is normally the electrical wire that we use to kind of keep our iPhone powered uh, during the streams. Uh, right now, we don't need to use it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to fasten this back up for next time. As you can see, I like to kind of do a double twist tie on both sides of the wire like this so that it remains uh, extra in place and doesn't really get anywhere or cause anyone any major issues like such. I'm trying to get a good view of it. There we go. Okay, that's over there. This is another dish towel. We can put that uh, back over here like that. Did I use this spatula for anything? I definitely remember bringing the spatula out. Oh, I was gonna use this for the taking out the mini quiches, but it ended up not really being used for anything. Right. Speaking of which, I'm just doing another checkup on the mini quiches. Seem to be okay, but I'm gonna just lower the temperature on the oven drawer again so that they're not uh, baking too much inside there. Okay. Echo, how much time is left on the timer? You have two minutes and 50 seconds two minutes. left on your 15 minute timer. Okay, let's uh, let's make a little bit of space here on the counter so that we can uh, schlep our remaining quiches into the oven as quickly as possible. First, we're just cleaning off the flour and such. There we go, there we go. All right, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, if we bring in our little image of Mario again, so uh, to count, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, so one big one and the small one uh, will be um, the spinach quiche, uh, and then uh, the rest will be tomato.
because the uh, tomato one, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We already did three, so that remains, that leaves us 13. That, that, I think that works out. I'm pretty sure that works out. Just trying to package up the spinach bag so I can put that back in the fridge. Get that done and over with. Speaking of which, I might as well take the uh, tomato mixture out of the fridge, get that ready. Okay. Probably one more minute. Oh, 40 seconds. Perfect. I think that the measuring cup I put by the sink has soaked enough, so I'm gonna put this in the washing machine for the time being. Oh, this cup, which we use for uh, cutting out the pieces of our uh, pie crust, is probably ready for the washing machine as well. Okay. Let's go ahead. Something big fell upstairs. I think it's the cat's fault. Echo, turn off the timer. Okay, there we go. I can hear Jackie the cat coming downstairs, which means that she 100% did some sort of mishap up there and feels guilty about it. All right, uh, nope. Setting the oven to 385 degrees convection bake. Okay. Uh, there we go. Hello, Jackie. How's it going? You didn't do anything bad while you were upstairs, did you? I hope you didn't. Shit. Did not mean for those to fall out. I mean, the fact that they fell out is okay because it means that they cooked properly, but we don't want them touching the dried chickpeas, do we? No, we do not. All right. Just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw out the pieces of wax paper as we go. Okay, uh, I'll do the same thing here. Jackie, where are you? I'm your friend, Jackie. Uh. It's a little bit difficult with the big one. It was easy with the small one though. There she is. Hey, Jackie, how's it going? Oh, Jackie got really concerned when she saw me. Did you do anything bad, Jackie? Don't tell me that you did something bad. Jackie, if you did something bad, just tell me. I got real spooked for a second there. I thought, oh no. 
is there somebody that just invaded my house? Because right now I'm the only person at home except for you. And then I remembered, of course, it must be Jackie. All right. We'll put these tarts over there. Bring this guy over here. I'll just let him cool down a little bit more. I know that Jackie wants something to eat right now, but she'll have to be a little bit patient because uh, I'm still in the process of dealing with these things. Yeah. Probably be easier if I just do them one by one. There we go. There we go. All right, uh, these two guys over here are gonna be for the spinach. So let's go ahead and let's get this stuff in. Again, just to confirm, mm. Mario has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 green spinachy spots. So 18 green spinachy spots he shall get. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna turn off the temperature on the oven drawer because I think that these guys have gotten enough. All right. I'm just gonna do one spoonful at a time per muffin tin. And then I'm going to add additional green stuff on top of it. So the matter first and the kind of watery liquidy part second. Okay, now we go back around to the beginning, adding more of the watery stuff in each. I have a feeling, I think I might need to make some more of this stuff actually. Sorry, Jackie. A 
second. Ah, really? oh, fuck. Did I, how much did I spill? Not that much, but I really can't afford to spill much of this stuff at this point. Do I want to make a little bit more quiche batter so that I can help soften these boys up a little bit more? Because just looking at them now, it just feels like some of them are just a little bit lacking in eggy stuff. And I can't help but fear that this is going to create issues down the road. Hmm. Let's do it. Nope, sorry, Jackie, not yet. All right. I'm gonna only use two eggs and a fourth a cup of milk. Eight oh two. All right. Definitely, I'm probably aiming to finish the stream more at like eight thirty now. Okay. Let's add just a touch of green food coloring so we can give it a nice greenish tint. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Uh, screw the pepper, it's fine. Okay.
right. That's that for the spinach quiches. Uh, I'm gonna move this big guy over to the side. Now we'll do our best to fill this thing up with the red stuff. Might be a little bit tough though. Thankfully this one has like a little part on the edge of the bowl which we can use to pour. Okay, yeah. just a little bit more, just a little bit more. There we go. Uh, let's just use a paper towel real quick to wipe down some of these tins. shit french fry underscore og is now following me thank you so much for the follow i'm just gonna put these mini quiches in the oven real quick as soon as i have done so uh i am going to go ahead and give you a nice big spin from the prize wheel of causality uh as is customary on this show uh whenever somebody follows or subscribes to me thank you so much french fry M much appreciated all right. Uh, let's bring the oven cam in uh, and let's put these bad boys in the oven. accidentally hit my foot on the washing machine. There we go. All right. Whew. Echo, set a timer for 27 minutes. 27 minutes, starting now. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's spin that wheel. I hope I don't have to do push-ups. Oh man, I'm jinxing myself saying that, right? All right, one, two, three. Shit, I knew that was gonna happen. I saw it happening in slow motion. Let me put that, reattach that real quick. Oh shit, are my hands a little bit dirty? Did, did I dirty up the prize wheel? I'll have to clean that later. All right, let's do this again. One, two, Three. Pokemon card time, hell yeah. Now this is a prize wheel of causality event that I am always in store for. Uh, let me just wash my hands real quick because I want to make sure that when I open up my Pokemon cards, they are nice and clean. 
thank you oh so much for letting me open up some more Pokemon cards, French fry. It's been a little while since I've been able to do so. I definitely did not do so last stream, and so I'm glad I'm able to do so now. Okay. All right, as you can see, you can catch a little view of my dishwasher over here. We're just gonna move that in very briefly. Uh, let's go ahead. Last time, uh, I believe I was going through a Fusion Strike pack. Uh, we got two thirds of the way there. We still got four more cards left. So let's see what these cards uh, have in store for us. All right. Card number one, let's see. No, 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 no. What's it gonna be? Oh, it is a trainer card, Farewell Bell. Um, if the Pokemon VMAX this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, search your deck for a card and put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. All right, I don't particularly care much for the trainer cards, but there we go. Card number two, Dan. No, 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 what's it gonna be? Oh, lo and behold, uh, it's Frostmoth, the evolution of Snom. Uh, it shows no mercy to any who desecrate fields and mountains. It will fly around on its icy wings, causing a blizzard to chase offenders away. I actually quite like this Pokemon. I'm pretty happy that I got him. All right, card number three, who's it gonna be? <clears throat> no, no. Na na, na na. Oh, another trainer card, Spongy Gloves. Uh, the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active water type Pokemon before applying weaknesses and resistances. Oh, I can imagine that that can be situationally very powerful. Na na, na na. What's card number four gonna be? Let's find out. Oh, it's a fire type energy card. That's nice. All right, here we go. Final card. Na na, na na, na na. What's it gonna be? Oh shit! It's fucking for alligator. I don't even know if I have a for alligator card. What a cool ass looking motherfucker this is. Uh, let's see. When it bites with its massive and powerful jaws, it shakes its head and savagely tears its victims up. Well, how do you do? I'm happy to finally have a Feraligator card if I indeed didn't have one before today's stream. Whew. All right, well, with that taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna continue my cleanup of the kitchen. Uh, let's see, quiches seem to be doing fine. Uh, and the quiches in the oven drawer are still pretty okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm actually going to turn the oven drawer back on just a scotch, just so that they're remaining warm. Okay, uh, first things first. You know what? Uh, I got to use the loo real quick, uh, so I'm just going to be right back. Said I would be back in two minutes, and I feel like I stayed true to that promise. Uh, I had a brief blank for a second. You know what? This has been a long and tiring stream. Let's have ourselves another tender moo.
These were the Snacks and Collation uh, snack I had earlier in the stream. This one looks more like a cow than any of the previous ones I've opened up. Mm, it's just as good. Oh. Hold on a sec. There we go. All right, first things first. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw these egg cartons out. Oh, whoops. I couldn't see it, but I nearly tripped down the stairs. That would have been real bad. Probably would have disconnected my mic and everything. Uh, let's continue to load up the dishwasher. These cutleries are going in there. Same thing with this measuring cup now that we no longer have any use for it. Same thing with the spoon. Thanks again to everybody for tuning in this late. This has been a long and arduous and Challenging stream on many levels, but I feel like we all managed to get through it together. see here. We have two eggshells, but five otherwise fine eggs. So I'm going to put these back in the uh, compost, which they should go into. The rest of these I'm putting back in the fridge. Sorry, Jackie, as soon as the stream is over, I'll feed you. Okay, what's next? I guess I can put this cheese in like a Ziploc bag and put it in the fridge. I'll do that. Jackie. Okay. All right. You win, Jackie. You want some food? You're going to get some food. Uh, there's no cat food in the fridge at the moment, though, so I'm going to have to uh, reach into this cupboard over here and get some for you there. Here we go. <clears throat> want some of this, Jackie? I know you do. Give me a quick second. I'm gonna grab your plate that I know that you like to eat from. I'm gonna scoop out half of this tint for you to enjoy on this fine evening. And the other half will go back in the fridge. Yes, yes, I know. I know you're hungry for some cat foodie. We just put the cat food back in the fridge because it smells kind of bad if you just leave it out. And then I will return your food to you. Now, Jackie, as thanks for me giving you food on stream, are you willing to make an on-stream appearance to help close out tonight's stream? 
We still have a few more minutes to go before we can assemble our Mario quiche face and it would be really nice if you would show yourself on stream. I'll be sure to wash my hands after so that I don't dirty up anything else. Jackie, here, come here, Jackie. Come here, Jackie. Oh, come here, come here, come here. There we go. How's it going, Jackie? You happy to be on stream with me today? Oh, there we go. Jackie wants her food. There you go. All right. Whew. Uh, let's go ahead and let's wash our hands real quick. I'm hoping that I'll be able to make more Jackie appearances in the future, but no promises. All right, Echo, how much time is left on the timer? You have 14 minutes left on your 27 minute timer. 14 minutes left. And it seems like our quiches are coming along quite nicely. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this uh, Milka Tender Moo box uh, in the garbage. Uh, actually in the recycling. Don't worry, not throwing perfectly reusable cardboard into any garbages today. Okay, what's next? Oh, I've forgotten. I had taken the uh, aluminum paper out earlier so they could wrap up the bacon while it was cooling. No need to use that anymore, so we can go ahead and we can put uh, that bad boy away. Uh, I think that I also took out a parchment paper thing at some point. Uh, I can put that away as well, but I don't know where it is. Weird. Um, you know what I can definitely put away is this plate. Uh, now that I put all of its cheese back in the fridge. So let me just uh, pull out the dishwasher, put that in there. Turns out we never need to use this big bowl over here, which is nice. So I'm gonna put that back in the cupboard from whence it came. It would have sucked if we had had to clean three big bowls after tonight's deal. Uh, but alas, that did not have to happen. And I'm really happy about that. Uh, you know what? We should fill up the burrito. Let's do that. Uh, again, a huge, tremendous thank you uh, for staying this late to watch me make these mini quiches. Uh, this stream took a lot longer than I was expecting it to on account of how much time blind baking the crusts uh, of the quiches took. Um, but I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. You are the best. Um, there's this pizza cutter here that I think I used earlier when I was cutting the um, dough. I didn't really use it that much, so I'm just gonna put it back in there like that. Uh, what's next? Oh, we've got our uh, measuring spoons. Didn't really, actually I did use them a lot, so those are gonna have to be cleaned. Uh, let's see. I think compost recycling uh, in this bin is more or less filled up, but we have all the chickpeas uh, that we gotta put somewhere. So I'm gonna grab one of the disposable uh, plastic uh, compost bags and I'm gonna Put the chickpeas in there. And these will go in our compost recycling ahead of tomorrow morning, uh, because tomorrow morning, the compost recycling is gonna be picked up. There we go. All right. Let's try and take it real slow. Okay.
I'm trying to make some more space in the dishwasher so I can fit more dishes in there. This thing, I feel kind of bad that I used this up tonight, but alas, it happens. Uh, I think I might wish, wash these with the other dishes that are not in the dishwasher. Uh, there's a bunch of twist ties out here on the counter. I'm gonna put these uh, back. There we go. Uh, you know what? I normally don't do this during the stream proper, but seeing as how we have enough things over here that need to be uh, washed after the stream, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring in the uh, dish box that I usually uh, use for dishes that need to be washed. And I'll just have it at the ready so I can kind of pile stuff into it. Everything is nicely set up for when the stream is over for me to give them a proper cleansing. That's the idea. Nearly forgot about this frying pan. This is gonna go in the to be clean pile as well. Uh, these dish towels, uh, I don't know that I'm necessarily gonna use them a whole lot more. I'll fold them up and put them in front of the oven as they were when the stream began. Although at some point, some of them are probably gonna uh, need to be cleaned. Okay. Oven mitts, I'm gonna put back over here for the time being. I don't know what I originally used this up the Ziploc bag for. Oh, look at this. I was wondering where this other thing of parchment paper went. I'm gonna put this back over here, like such. Uh, oh, and this is the blender piece that I used uh, when I made the tomatoes earlier. Man, so much stuff has happened on tonight's stream. It is easy to forget about everything. Uh, while I'm here, while I'm getting things set up at the sink, I'm also gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring back in uh, the dish rack that we typically dry dishes on. So you'll get to see another part of our kitchen that's not off scene uh, on these streams. Ta-da! This is what it looks like. And we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this uh, in front of the camera that is currently uh, looking over the sink. Okay. Oh, and we need to clean uh, this uh, frying pan as well. I was mistaken, that bigger frying pan earlier was what was used for the uh, bacon. The smaller one was the one that was used uh, for the tomato paste. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap this bad boy up real tight and I'm gonna put it with the compost recycling. There we go. So that we all remember to throw it out with everything else when we reach the end of the stream today. Whew. We managed to make our kitchen pretty clean after all of that. Uh, of course, the counters still need to be wiped down, but we can probably do that later. Uh, before I forget, let's go ahead and let's clean our uh, green food coloring. Some of the food coloring actually got on the green food coloring container itself when we were using it earlier. And so we're just gonna wipe it down just a little bit, just so that the green food coloring doesn't get on anything else in the cabinet that we normally keep it stored inside of. Oh, 
five minutes left according to the timer. <sighs> okay, what next? I mean, we've pretty much more or less cleaned up most of what needs to be cleaned up uh, as these streams, you know, reach their conclusion. Obviously, I can start to clean up some of the dishes here a little bit. Uh, let's see, still five minutes and like 16 seconds. It was actually closer to six minutes earlier. All right, uh, let's go ahead. Let's clean a couple of dishes. Just uh, pass a little bit of the time. Hope you guys don't mind me stalling just a little bit. Unfortunately, the quiches uh, need all the time that they can uh, get inside the oven. And so while that's happening, we're just going to make our workload easier for when the stream reaches its natural conclusion. this up with water so it can soak a little bit. There we go. Uh, these like uh, cat food containers are not going to be reused so we just need to make sure that they're properly rinsed. Oh, these are some um, garlic potato containers that I uh, got just before the stream. I had myself some um, garlic potatoes and a pita wrap from a restaurant called Bustan here in Montreal. Uh, real good. We're just going to make sure that those are properly rinsed so that they can go into the uh, recycling without issue. There we go. Well, we got some sort of plastic cover of a container. This is definitely going in the recycling. I don't remember what this is for. I think I use it for some like beef towel Tallow, yeah, that's a tough word to pronounce, uh, that I made at the conclusion of some other like cooking project that I did a long time ago uh, that I never returned back to. Uh, let's see, is there anything else here? Oh, you know what? This is the bowl that I used for the uh, tomato mixture earlier. Let's just, there we go. We're just gonna soak it just so that later on it will be easier to clean when we actually properly get around to cleaning it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this spatula in there too so it can soak in there. I believe that's the spatula that I used for the tomato mixture on the um, stove when I was cooking it in the frying pan. Oh, this thing here, relatively clean, so we're just gonna give that a quick little rinse. Uh, let's see here. Echo, how much time is left on the timer? You have two minutes and 20 seconds left on your 27-minute timer. Two minutes left. Okay. Well, let's just get a couple more easy and quick things out of the way. This is the uh, top that was used for the uh, garlic uh, potato container number one. And this is the top that was used for the garlic container number two. There we go. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, this is um, a dough scraper that I was using yesterday to make the uh, various uh, the uh, pie crust uh, dough pieces that I use today. So we're gonna give that a nice rinse. There we go. Okay, let's take a quick break from the sink. And let's check out how things are going in the oven. Ooh, I'm pleased with how green looking the green quiches are. When I take them out of the oven, you'll be quite pleased with their green coloration as well. That's all I'll say on the matter. Okay. Like last time, I'll probably put, I'll put one of them on the 
<clears throat> stove and I'll put the other two or so, uh, I'll put, no, I'll put, yeah, I'll put one of them on the stove and I'll put the other two over here. Actually, you know what? I said earlier that I would wipe down the counter later, but I'm actually gonna wanna wipe down the counter now because I'm gonna wanna put the mini quiches on them when I assemble Mario. So let's do that. There we go. Echo, turn off the timer. There we go. Let me just wipe down the counter one more time. There we go. <sighs> turn off the oven. Let's start taking our quiches out. go. Number one, number two, and number three. There we go. <sighs> this is what our little green quiche boys look like. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Uh, let's take our other um, plate of quiches out of the oven. Oh, man, so much difficult stretching on today's stream. Okay. Uh, we need to grab ourselves a knife so that we can begin to wedge these things out of their things. Well, like last time, it's gonna be very easy to wedge them out of that one. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if maybe I should put a like white, uh, like a white sheet on the counter so they can be a little bit more obvious uh, of the creation that we're in the process of creating. go. Green number one is out. Okay. one came out a little bit weird, but all of the quiches that were made in uh, these containers came out great, as usual. Okay. Whew. Let's move this over to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the white cloth down on the counter. It's gonna make our lives uh, that much more ritzy. Let me grab a quick uh, glass of water before I do so, though. <sighs> Perfect. All right. 
All right. trying to move the wire for the uh, Alexa out of the way. Okay. Okay. I think that's good enough. Uh, let me just, I'll move the stream deck over just a little bit as well. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, further ado, let's bring Mario's face back on stream. Okay. I guess we can start from the bottom to make our life easier. Uh, let me grab uh, some of the yellow quiches. Oh, shit. One of them fell on the floor. This, it's a green one. I'll, I'll put it over to the side just so I'll remember when I'm doing this which one it was. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Okay. One, two. Mmm, tasty. Three, four. There we go. Five, six, seven. And they seem about evenly distributed from each other in terms of, you know, where they're at. All right, next row, one, two, three, four. And then we got two and four uh, green things on either, either side of it. All right. These two green ones are the ones that fell earlier. And there we go, three, four. This is Mario's stash. Uh, next row, we got, uh, one green, one yellow, two green, three yellow, one green, three yellow. This is the longest one. Grab one from this one over here. There we go. One green. You can see it's slowly coming into shape, and I think it's going to be quite cool looking. And then it's too green. There we go. Three yellow, right? Uh, it's a little bit tough to take these ones out. I need to, where's the fork or the knife I was using earlier? I saw this big knife that I was using at some point during the stream, possibly for the cheese. I'll use that for now. Uh, so let's see, just one green one and then three yellow ones. Okay. Okay, so we've gotten those taken care of. We've got the longest one. Next up, it's gonna be green, yellow, green, yellow, 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 green, yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay. I think I might need to push this down, actually. Let's do that. Okay, uh, let's grab some green. Fortunately, it's not gonna look right from this perspective. I'm realizing that now, but it's all right. Well, we got two guys that actually stuck together like this. 
I think I'm going to just remove this part, although it does look kind of cool. Let's see. One, two, three. go one two three I'm just gonna fill in the rest of the yellow ones so one two three and then there we go all right let's finish off the greens One here and one here, that's Mario's eye. You know what, I'm thinking I might need to actually push this creation together a little bit more. Because in its current form, wait, does this one even have a... That's odd. It's like the crust of this one wasn't even there. I think I might need to push this together a little bit more because it's not as apparent what I'm making in this form. All right. There we go. That's the last green one. All right. Red ones start up here. It's all just reds at this point. I think these ones came out good. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think. Because if you look at the top one, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Yep. Yeah, it's not, I think I'm going to need to scrunch this guy together a little bit closer to make it more obvious what I'm trying to do. I mean, ultimately, it's not going to be my most successful food creation, but it's the basic shape there. Uh, let me just spend, let's see, it's 848. Let me just spend another two minutes trying to really kind of scrunch it closer. And then I'll call it quits for the evening. Mario's ear right here. Okay, the, bunching these guys together was definitely the right choice. Oh, wait a minute, did I do this wrong a little bit? I think I did. Luckily we can just roll them over like such. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
All right. I think this looks pretty good. I think this looks pretty good. Uh, it's not necessarily the best creation I've ever made on stream, but I'm sure that people will be excited all, to, all the same to see uh, what it looks like when it's finally time to show them off. Uh, thank you to everybody for tuning in to tonight's stream. Uh, man, I'm thinking after how intensive tonight's stream was that maybe I should start thinking about reducing the number of episodes in this season of Cozy Bear's Cooking, maybe reducing it down to like 10 instead of 12, but those remaining episodes are going to be still just as good as this one. I can assure you of that. Uh, remember that no matter how many episodes of Coast Bears Cooking Season 3 are going to be left, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Alex Kozina. That's at A-L-E-X-K-O-Z-I-N-A, -A, uh, where you'll be able to see plenty more media about the food creations I make here on stream. Uh, and remember that, of course, I'll be back next Sunday on this channel, twitch.tv slash Coast Bear Live at 4 p.m. EST when another delicious dish. Uh, but until then, I want you to keep on cooking.